Howdy all and welcome to the Operating System Collegiate Championship for Overwatch. Uh, my name is Gabe, otherwise known as the Junior Ace, and I am super excited to have Crystal, Black Crystal, here with me. Hey, 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 how's it going, everybody? I'm so excited for tonight, man. <laughs> uh, and we have Hypnobeam here as well. I am also very excited. Very excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's just give you guys a quick rundown as you're joining us. Uh, this will be a seven-week season with every team taking, playing one game a week. There are 12 universities that are taking part. And at the end of that, we will have the top eight seeds, top eight records, move forward onto a playoff tournament, which will be played that following weekend. And I cannot tell you how excited all of us are about the quality of Overwatch that will be going on. Uh, yeah, let's, you know, have, you guys chime in. What do you think? How are you feeling? I mean, I'm, I am mentioned before, I, I'm going to say it two more times. Very <clears throat> excited. Very excited. But even the first match of this night is going to be something to look forward to. I think I, 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 we were discussing it before, and, uh, and uh, the first two teams we have, uh, RIT and Rutgers, right? Both are highly respected Overwatch teams. Um, I believe I heard that they uh, they hit, what is it, top five in the country? Uh, perennial powerhouses. Area? That's what yeah. I'll say. So what about you, BK? What do you think? Oh, man. RIT, Rutgers, I can't. So I've had a little a little chance to get to know some of those teams when I did my work with the, the CEC BSPN. So like, this is really cool to see what they're bringing to the table. These teams are so good. Like, this is actually the type of Overwatch you want to see tonight. Like, I am on the edge of my seat. I'm like, yo, can we get in this match? Like, I'm all happy and I want to banter. And I'm like, oh, I miss you too. <laughs> but like, can we like see these games? Because these players are stacked. I'm looking over here at these rosters like, oh my gosh, are we going to see some good DPS today? Is this is what's gonna happen? My body is so ready. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's just give a quick shout out to all these amazing schools that are taking part uh, that we're super excited to have. Uh, we have Hunter College, we have University of Texas, we have Ole Miss, we have NYIT, we have St. John's, uh, Westchester University, UC Westchester. Irvine, yeah, RIT, Harrisburg University, Temple, and University of North Texas, Denton. What a lovely, lovely city. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's check in and just see, you know, if our teams are ready, and then we can just jump on into it. Sure. I know. I'm Ooh, at the edge looks like place. everyone's ready. Awesome. I have a I have a question. Yeah. What What are the bands for uh for this time around here? Are, oh. are we using bands here? Yes, so we will be following the hero bands, same as the Overwatch League. But because we're playing on Mondays, we're going to use last week's. So every team gets a full, you know, seven days to use it. But oh, I love this graphic. Shout out to Stratus, our uh, graphic designer. You know, we're going to ban uh, Reinhardt, Widow, McCree, and Brig. Uh, so we okay. saw what teams were doing with that in the league. What do you guys think we're going to be seeing a lot of today? No, you well, tell one me more that. hero not listed in the bands list oh. that might need to be mentioned is <clears throat> Echo, of course. Uh, so Echo, as I understand, is not going to be here for this week. And since only about six hours ago, um, we uh, received the hero bands for the upcoming week uh, for Ladder and Overwatch League, and she is banned there as well. So it can be expected that she will likely not be played this week or next, as far as I understand. Yes, that is correct. I mean, very well, man. We were seeing some play of her earlier. I'm not ready for it. I'm just, I'm not ready for oh, it. Boy. I think some more kinks need to be figured out before we see anything else. But <laughs> with these bands here for tonight, I think we're going to see some interesting comps here. What types of tanks do you think we're going to be seeing tonight? We've got Rhine out. That's huge. What I'm really hoping to see is a little bit of dive action here, right? So since we see that Brig has been taken out um, and, and Reinhardt as well, I'm super curious to see how many teams are going to be experimenting more with like the classic Winston Diva tank line. Uh, but I will also would not be surprised to see a more conservative double shield sort of situation between an Orisa and a Sigma, which we see pretty popularly. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, some of the teams go a little bit more aggressive and we see a little bit fast paced action with those dive tanks, however. What are you guys expecting to see? Yeah, I uh, dive is just fun to watch. I think we're, we're all big fans of just, you know, 
the controlled chaos that comes with it. But when I saw the bands, I definitely imagined that we would see a lot of the Arisa Sigma. Like, you know, that's just what people are already used to running. That's, you know, pretty common on ladder right now. But uh, let's 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 hope for some dive. I mean, you know, I'm always up for a good blade. Some tracer play is always fun. Would love to see that. But that's not to count out. Even in a double shield, we still get some really exciting gameplay from even just Doom Fists and the like and Reapers. Oh, yeah. Obviously, a lot of people hate on May, and I get it. But uh, what's curious is that you know May has some you know perhaps not for this week, but she does have some upcoming nerfs supposedly along the way. So we're probably going to see even just between this week and the next a lot of dynamic changes in the, in the hero choices that these teams are choosing. So I'm wondering how aggressive they're going to be out the gate with them either picking Doom Reaper or trying to go slow as it goes with maybe like a May Torb or something along those lines. Would love to see that. But in terms of support, any ideas there without the Brig? Without the Brig, man? I mean, I, I mean, without the Brig or the McCree, I'm sitting here like, let me see Tracer, let alone thinking about supports. But um, I think with the dive, <laughs> maybe we'll see a bit of a Mercy, be able to move around with that. Lucio could be pretty pretty viable here um, if they do try to want to like move around, be separate, but still have that mobility. Um, Honestly, I'm just looking for something unique. Like I'm, I'm excited for all those weird picks and those weird comps. You know me. Like when we were practicing earlier, I was like, oh, I can't, I can't take it. And they pull out that clutch pick. So um, I don't know. I I want to see an Ana, but it's it's not going to be very viable for her to to be picked here. So you know, missing that utility there, I'm going to be very interested to see uh, what supports uh, are selected here and uh, what kind of uh, champions or heroes uh, these people pick. Uh, mostly are are really cool so I'm, I'm looking at the roster now trying to like see i'm like analyzing like okay so not gonna see anna from this person maybe zen like <laughs> i'm trying to figure it out you know all the numbers i'm, are seeing, going on I'm seeing a lot of lucio picks among the yeah. hero pools of some of these players so you know i'm hoping lucio's is always fun to watch let's be honest yeah. uh a good lucio can entertain the masses and is going to be the crux. I, I'm very personally interested in seeing who's going to be more of like the shot, the shot caller, the person being able to call the plays, mobilize the team to rearrange themselves to different positions so that prepare for the next move. Usually, I, I love to see that as the Lucios uh, of the group, but um, we're going to see like, <laughs> hopefully that, you know, uh, we see some very uh, interesting strategies depending on the map about where people move and how quickly they move there with their Lucios. Very excited to see that. Uh, we can hope. We can hope. Fingers yeah. crossed. I'm sitting here that, or, or I think it's a Sigma play. I, I mean, no Ryan. I, I'm there for some Sigma. Do you think we get a lot of Moira, considering that we might end up with that double shield, and also the dive? Potentially, yeah. Right. I, I mean, Moira is very powerful in double shield. The only part where she might be have you know basically hard mode is. Uh, is if the other team decides to stick with a diva as this as the off tank, right? In which case, you know, uh, more, half of Moira's kit disappears in the form of her, yeah. you know, her orbs, right? So, um, if that is the case, then I would imagine a quick switch off of Moira to compensate for that, you know, is is expected. But otherwise, uh, you know, we could see a lot of her. And we're going to Elios. Yes, this is it. Ah, initiating match. Control Great. First. So to be clear, like right? We, uh, uh, Gabe, would you be able to break down a, the, like basically how these matches are constructed? Like uh, it's first yeah, to three wins, so, correct? Yeah. So uh, what we're doing is we are every match will be first to three. So it could be done in three maps. It could be done in four, five, six, seven. You know, if the right situations play out, uh, which hopefully means great matches and not just you know blowing each other out back and forth. That's not fun. But, uh, so yeah, we actually, you know, laid ourselves at the floor, at the feet, so to speak, of the RNG gods, and have randomized maps two, three, and four, so they are in a different order for every match. One and five will be controlled, just because it's a good way to start and sort of wrap things up. Uh, but for now, let's focus on Ilios. Yeah, first was a control map. Uh, for anyone curious, uh, blue team is Rutgers. RIT is the red team, and we can see that of our compositions right now, we do have that double shield tank line on both sides, just like we were expecting. Oh, Sigma! I'm sorry, sorry guys, I'm excited, I was ready for it. Spicy, Sigma here coming in here initiating, trying to get this nice little right side play, not too worried about boobs. 
Um, I'm, I'm glad for that. I like this position here on the right there. Rucker is really making use of that high ground here, but not on the point here as it's opening up. But just you see who's going to take it first. Huge that was purple. A massive splash. Massive splash done by Kiwi there. So uh, it, it seems like to, to initiate the, the fight win for RIT there, which is, is very important. RIT had an opportunity um, uh, to actually lose their Sigma earlier because of the May wall by King. But uh, luckily, he was able to regroup before that happened. But the Ana splash really allowed for RIT to take the first point. That was interesting because they survived. They survived the like initial contest with the Doom boop and you know the actual Lucio boop, but you know didn't fall to that. But the nade. Oh man, Coral had to come out there for Rutgers, but that's insane there. But not really getting much fix off of that. Here we are seeing some very defensive uh, uh, positioning done by Rutgers as RIT aggressively takes it over, right? So here we can see that Choco Man on RIT, right, as the Doom Fist, is periodically going to be trying to punch through Rutgers' defenses and then just try to get out of there if they aren't able to get that pick. But trying to force Rutgers to play defensively is working in RIT's favor, as you can see right here. So at this point, this is a, a somewhat aggressive, right? Like a stance for RIT to be on the point. Their 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 back is to the is to the actual control area. Um, we have a bunch of ults uh, ready to be online, and here comes the mail. I believe he dropped here. Watch the four ults. Rutgers managed to take this fight here, but expending quite a bit of ult. Yeah, four people from RIT dropped from that uh, may, uh, building off of that. Uh, uh, you would expect like uh, the the May ult to normally take a lot of people out, which it did. It, it basically was able to take their tank line uh, out of commission, and RIT was able to just swoop in and clean up the rest. Blue Jay's ult is now online as well. Here, Vanguard using those bongos early here, just trying to get their push to that choke. Don't want to get stuck in spawn. Reaper trying to get these early ticks, just pushing the back to the point, but getting some knife by back there. Sigma ult out, coming out nice and spicy, but not really catching anybody here. Kind of just throwing ults around. All right, Lucio Beelt come, beat comes out, and this is right now, this is where Rucker should be aggressive. And we can see that that Reaper ult could have done a lot more damage. Parsball was able to mitigate most of it, but is taken out before being able to bounce back. Kucho, oh man, just popping off, picking insane there as well. <laughs> I'm loving it. I, you said it first, Doofus. It's, it's nice to watch, man. Yeah, love it. Uh, an important note here is that we do see Wiz is on Sombra and is about halfway to EMP, and this could be huge against a double shield and a Doom Fist. So, uh, if they're able to build that up in time, it is overtime. Might not happen. Oh man, Vanguard's not gonna have it, man. The team synergy for RIT is too strong here. Coalesce is trying to keep Rutgers in the fight. But wow, RIT's response is just too strong. It is, at this point, it's just a staggering of a fight. At and it's just a point for RIT pretty decisively. 100 to 40% is is a, is a pretty good ratio in RIT's favor. They were very aggressive and you rode that aggression uh, in the form of momentum pretty well. Uh, their tank line was definitely uh, uh, making tons of space for Choco Man and Blue Jay to do their jobs. So good on them for doing that. In that same vein, I mean, we have to praise their supports. Those tanks were just in the middle of everything and just did not go down for most of that map. Oh no, Vanguard yeah. was a force to be met. I didn't see him go down. I don't think I saw him go down once. I'd have to check the stats on that. Insane was doing the best that they could do on Moira, but it was just <laughs> not enough to keep up. <laughs> okay. I guess how, Take a look how at far along is this game? Oh. Oh, Take the tour. DPS lineup, right? We have we have the Torb now, in addition to the Doomfist, but we're also seeing a Roadhog, and Roadhog, you know, is always a fun pick for well, but it's also extremely dangerous, right? Uh, feeds a lot of ult charge and is just as vulnerable to falling into the well. So I'm so curious as to how Vanguard handles it. Yeah, I'm interested in the back position here. I, I like it as Arissa, really, really being able to move around the corner, but. I feel like it's a little risky spot here. Wiz is coming in, getting the picks though, so they were able to capitalize and take that point there. Shoutouts to Rutgers. 
really well done by Wiz and King for this first initial take, right? The two of them really plowed through, um, <laughs> through their tank line, took out a lot of very key players on the other on RIT side. So uh, pretty much establishing where they're set up, and they've got a decent amount of volt charge. Uh, and then just back for. walks in and just sits on the point. You know what I'm saying? They just make way for the takes. I'm loving it. <laughs> a lot bit more cohesive here. Rutgers is playing a little bit tighter. Let's see if they can hold this longer. So right now we can see that RIT set up two tanks on either side of the point right now, right? So they're not really staggering their shields together, um, which makes it a little bit easier for Rutgers to take it down. King takes a big chunk out of Choco Man, but then uh, Wiz gets taken out by Blue Jay, so it's a DPS trade-off here. Now Rutgers kind of got split up here. Spread out amongst the point there. Part of all, just taking out the support of the back line there. Still without... brawling on this corner. Yeah, Insane. this is a one long fight. At this point, they're just contesting all that Rutgers wants is for that percentage to tick up for as long as possible. Okay, here's Wiz. Looks like they might be jumping in for a Reaper ult. Let's see how many they take. Here comes the ult. The in the back oh, there. Nope, they opted out of it. Oh, come on, Wiz. <laughs> I mean, it was a smart he... play. Yeah. It was yeah. a smart play. He knew that if he could knock that N out real quick, he would have the rest of the team to himself. Like, there was no one that really could have stopped him at that point. Yeah, and regrettably, but it, just it is good work. discipline because uh, at that point, the fight was mostly over, right? Most of Rutgers' team was taken out before Wiz had an opportunity to ult and carry the momentum forward. Oh man, it's Old City here. Sigma coming out. Both are results out on the field here. King and Wiz just taking picks left and right. Rutgers up here. That was quick. Wow, wow. Quick and decisive and takeover for Rutgers. At this point, Wiz still has Reaper ult, so you can see that he's positioning himself up top just to get a good vantage point to see where he might want to drop it, right? So still having this Reaper ult is a very big benefit. And note, by the way, that RIT did switch off of Torb and Hog back over to uh, uh, Vanguard uh, being on Sigma and Blue Jay on Reaper. Uh, I will say the scouting report on Wiz does say that Wiz is the most likely to wipe an entire team by himself, so... <laughs> a lot of restraint yeah. there keeping that ult. <laughs> That's a lot of hype built up on top of this Death Blossom here. Let's see how it goes. Here it comes. I've anticipated every time, and every time I was wrong. Here it is! And it Ooh. takes out two! Those are big, big picks. That's the here. Rutgers is in this fight. Parsifal taking out Shoko Man, no DPS left. Oh no, oh. but another boop, the Wiz is out! Insane, it's getting some picks here, seeing all that damage done by Moira, I love it. <laughs> Seems somebody does point, beat the one Wiz. To one. The, so the oh, first man, the, you know, the, the first round it was, you know, 40 to 100. Now it's 100 to roughly 40. So this is a very nice even start to the match, I'm very excited. Beautiful. This is why I like starting with control. <laughs> Gets you right in there. Well, I think we've already seen just two different sort of styles. Where on that first point, we saw RIT. You know, no knock on the Rutgers players, but just lots of individual skill come out. But then Rutgers really just played as a team. Well, absolutely. There's a lot of credit that to the Lucios on both sides, too, for doing a lot of work on well. Oh, this here just looking at the back. Wiz is trying to get into a better position here as Reaper. Rocks are flying out. It's a brawl inside. Yep. Not even near the point, point. Now that you see that Parzival's taken out, now RIT is going to have to press W and push through because they know there's only five on the other side. And Sigma mitigates a lot of damage, so they're not going to be able to handle as much damage. But have they realized Wiz is above them? I don't know. I don't know. Up. Ah. It comes to drop from Wiz. Sneaky. Gotta be able nice to get try. out. You're not always going to get kills as Reaper, as long as you make it out alive. You've done your job, right? Absolutely, Rutgers here trying to encroach on the point. Fully for sure, RIT, a lot of dominance here. Insane, huge pick! 
Oh my gosh, and now it's Chase. Everyone's died. King following up like he was meant to, wow. and that was a wrap. Wow. Decisive. No, no ult needed? A, a, a lot of credit for Vac and Necrosis for setting a lot of that first fight, that, that fight just now up, right? So Vac actually was able to use Hall, pull him over. Necrosis went to boot them all off, and while it didn't get the environmental kill, it dislodged half their tank line away. And so RIT was then able to sort of splinter them and come in and take over, let the DPS do their jobs at that point. are trying to hold on here against the Saints Coalescence. Wow. Don't know if all these ults were worth it though, Rutgers. I, I mean, the, the Moira ult definitely set things up, and then it was just a matter for King and Wiz to go in and hold down left click. It, they, they made the most of that ult. So good on them. I'd say Rutgers is looking very strong with their current DPS lineup. RIT setting up on the high ground here, trying to get a good position. Vanguard with his ult out, drop on with his play. Can we get any picks from it though? It's rotation. We have a trade. Ooh, okay, King. Rutgers starting to take back in. Wiz and King doing their thing, but back and Parzival are absolutely to thank here as well for taking up that space and getting picks of their own. So well done on their part. Am I seeing a trend here? I feel like I'm seeing like a weird bait. It's like at the start of the team fight, the DPS disappear. All of a sudden, and then all of a sudden, King is back, Wiz is back. In the middle of the team fight, they just take everybody yeah. out. They are the silent ninjas of Rutgers right now. Oh, it's beautiful. Smash has his ult ready. I'm waiting to see if they're going to initiate with it or not. If they do, it's really got to be on RIT to take there. advantage of it. Can we get anything from it though? RIT not getting much off that Sigma all trying to push on the point here. Is that nine? He ate. Blue Jay getting that one pick does on take insane. Out insane, which is pretty huge. Blue Jay able to capitalize on a follow-up kill on Parzival as well. Oh, everyone's so low. Oh, RIT is wow. it. RIT able to take it back right at the 99% mark, right? So so at this point, Rutgers is going to be taking a look at their ult percentages and wondering, okay, we have one team fight left, right? Right now, the only one we've got online is VAC, maybe Parzival's. Um, we have the uh, Insane's Moira ult here. They've, they're going to press Q as much as they can uh, and try to coordinate as much as they can to win this last team fight. Absolutely. Wiz is totally going to get his ult in this next fight there. This is a dub if they could coordinate correctly. I'm here for it. Possible pushing in, throwing both of the tank ults here, giving them that room they need to get on point and get some picks. <laughs> nice sleep. <laughs> sleep. Okay, Anna, I see you, girl. <laughs> oh man. Oh man, but here, here, Parzival is tearing it in. Wiz is just picking up the pieces. And at this point, oh, it is looking pretty needed. definitively for Rutgers. Lucio with the last ditch stall there. <laughs> We love to see okay, it, Lucio. Okay, here's the overtime. Yeah, at this point, Vanguard's on Hammond. Can he make it back Ooh. in time? Oh! Choco! We, coming in! We saw that Choco Man is able to get back oh. there, but... Three taken out. It's going to be very hard for the sustained uh, hold here. Uh, and there oh, goes yeah. Vanguard. Alright, so to switch to the stall characters as much as they could, but it wasn't enough. Oh, so man, BK. Effort. Gabe, what a game to start this off with, am I right? That was I've, actually... Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, all those en engagements, I mean, isn't that sort of textbook team play? Yeah, I mean, even this, th this is a prime example of that, right? We Insane opens up with a really, really uh, uh, efficient uh, Moira ult there. Didn't even have to heal too much, so basically using it to pressure RIT into an uncomfortable position, and then just letting the DPS come in and, and take advantage of that split. So. I, I, I just want to see more and more of those kinds of, of coordinated team fights. I, I, I'm super excited to see where this goes in a non-control map format. Oh, yeah. Choco? Yeah. Uh, Oof. I'm sorry. I'm place. sorry. He was all over no. the place. I'm like, is it now? I was going to read it full circle. Now, is that just for control? Do you think we're going to still see that type of play as we go into the different maps, Gabe? Like, this is you. This is your field, man. You got to let a girl know. I mean... We'll see. Uh, it's interesting in that the next map played is Numbani, and you know, many a team have failed on Numbani. 
uh, you know, I, I, I'll include the three of us, right? I mean, we've all had good <laughs> games, and then, you know. I've won every single Numbani game I've ever oh played my in my God. entire life. That's not true. You can take that one to the bank and cash it. There you go. <laughs> Do not yeah. out me like this, guys. Come on, come on. <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like we will really see sort of the team synergy on the escort, the hybrid, the assault type maps. Like control is, it always just feels different to me. These mm. really, really take everyone, you know, rolling in together. Yeah, I, I think control points on, in, on that same field, right? Control points are very much a good showcase of individual capability, in which case I think we really got to see some of the potential that Wiz and King were able to put out. Uh, we also were able to see basically what like what Blue Jay could do. Um, and so control point will allow them to sort of like show and demonstrate their, their individual capabilities. But as we go to Mbani and other sort of payload or control point related uh, maps, I'm very interested to see how much that individual skill and capability meshes with the rest of their team. Do you agree? Absolutely. Uh, I, I really yeah. do. I think you said it there concisely there. It's really going to be a testament to teamwork, especially in Umbani, guys. Oh, forget about it, man. That's not the New York you're in me, all right? Seriously, forget about it. It is hard <laughs> as hell to get through that first part, man. I don't know. That first choke, I can't. I can't take it. And with, with no Ryan here, we're definitely going to see probably double shields again. I feel it's going to be a very slow sludge. So I'm hoping to see more of that dive. I'm hoping to see Doom again. I want to see that that play. There's a lot more room to play with. But again, that makes it a little bit more difficult, right? So I'm really interested to see what these teams are going to be playing as going forward into the next round. Yeah, the Doom is almost certainly going to be played. There's just so much verticality that you have on that map. Like, you can zip in and out and get around corners and get away. Well, for, for yeah, for first point in Bonnie, it, it, that is ent entirely possible. I, I also wouldn't be surprised to see just a straight up, like, if we're talking defense, even just a straight up May Torb situation, right? That's what's about to say. Yeah, it, there, there are a lot of opportunities to be able to split that team and also just make it, even once you do make it past the ice wall, making it really irritating to push forward because of the Torb turret, right? So uh, on defense, that is definitely what I'm expecting. And I mean, it's really easy to say, like, you know, oh, Torb, you know, oh my god, they're that kind of team. But Torb is in a really good place right now. Like, if you can actually pace those shots, it, it, it's a big plus to the overall team. Torb is scary as hell right now. <laughs> like, you turn around, you see, and you're not even in your full back line, right? Just he's just in that corner of your screen. He's just landing those shots. It's terrifying. I don't, I don't want to deal with the Torb. Yeah. I really don't. <laughs> not on New Bonnie, guys. Oh cool. man, if we call that, I'm gonna be so upset. I'm sorry for whoever <laughs> is on attack if we call this. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, before, oh, go ahead, Matt. Oh, no, I mean, uh, just as a last thought, I guess, uh, you know, I was a little bit surprised with like RIT's choice of, you know, Roadhog and uh, and Torb for that last point. So I'm hoping that they throw a wrench into the plans on Nimbani as well, and they just completely throw away our expectations. So we'll see. Uh, so before we go on to the second map, let's uh, let's just take a quick peek at all the schools involved again and just say thanks to everyone for watching and taking part. And uh, this has been a real treat for us to get together. And uh, like we talked about on Twitter, just like we just wanted to give, you know, a little sense of normalcy in these times that we're all in. And, you know, Overwatch is fun. We love it. What else? What else can we say? No, absolutely, man. You're stuck at home. You playing these games already. We know it. So we got to, you know, <laughs> add a little flavor to it, add a little fun, bring everyone together. <laughs> Oof, and the guys are already getting into the match, too. I am so excited for this. This is it, man. Yeah. Oh, so we uh, have RIT starting. To... Yeah. Go ahead, Matt. Starting attack. Sorry, for, for anyone who, who is, who's tuning in who didn't see the original mention of it uh, when the stream started, the hero ban list is using last week's ban list. So you are not going to see uh, Reinhardt, McCree, Widowmaker, or Brig, or Echo in this selection. So... Uh, just a reminder to that. Great reminder too here as we're seeing the the teams they're building. I always I always hate to talk about what comps we're gonna see at this part for attack because they always like to cuck me. They always like to change it up at the end. 
So mm -hmm. I'll hold off until we finally get out there. Might be using some sem for something cheeky. I I'm here for it. I love yeah. sem. Uh, I personally wouldn't be very surprised if Chilko Man stays on Farah. Farah can be pretty strong here, especially if you're expecting a May or Torbjorn. So, uh, wouldn't be surprised about that and Wisp staying on Mercy for this. Okay, so we're, we're all seeing what RIT is rolling with tank-wise, right? We're seeing the Hammond and Winston yes. here? <laughs> yes, we um, are. I am so interested. All right, <laughs> this is great. So you can see that actually Ooh, Smash is trying to huge force. Huge I'm sorry. Yeah, that's huge. I will not waste but you can see that Smash is trying to pull off Rutgers from the high ground defensive position by just sort of like baiting them on the point there. They're trying, RIT is trying, but Rutgers is being hella responsive. They are not taking that. They're like, we see your attack. We know where you're going. We're not going to wait to jump down and rotate. Who do you think we are? <laughs> yeah, they were They were very patient with holding that, that defensive position. Textbook. Yeah, but it, uh, King was able to successfully sort of like mitigate the what Smash was trying between ice walls and CCing Smash. Uh, at that point, once they got a pick, they basically dropped down and cleaned up everybody else. So. Uh, well done, very patiently played by Rutgers. Vanguard jumping in here as Mucky trying to get a little tick, trying to disheveled Rutgers in their high ground position here. <laughs> Wiz getting Zen and Mercy both supports in the back. Whoa! Okay, Three Wiz, kill for Wiz. Not only Guess taking out both works. supports. Yeah. Shoutouts to Monkey there. I mean, what are you going to do with the monkey in your face, you know? <laughs> the most painful thing in the world, getting that icicle right in your Achilles. Ugh. That's, that's at least a 12-month recovery time. <laughs> so I have to admit, I think at this point, RIT is playing on a little bit of a hard mode between Smash against the May and Reaper, uh, Winston playing against the May and Reaper. Whoa! Whoa! Blue Jay with a huge stick on Parzival. And Saints out of the game too. That's a big pick in my book. With no back, Rutgers doesn't really have much to stand on the point here. RT just gonna clean up. Nice cap. Okay. Very nice cap. Much credit to to uh, to Blue Jay for opening that up, right? So uh, I I believe, and I don't recall correctly, but. I believe that most of RIT's lineup basically tried to bait to towards point, and then Blue Jay just sort of took advantage of just two people being on that high ground defensively, landed a sticky on Parzival and finished him off. And without Parzival to mitigate the rest of the damage, it was just a matter of uh, of, of, of Blue Jay and, and Choco Man laying down too much damage for Rutgers to keep up with. Choco going to pick on back here, but we're, we're still down one on Rutgers' side here. Trying to make it around this choke here, which is a rough spot. The spawn camping is the worst, so I, I like to get as far this is away as I can, personally, when I'm on this map. Indeed, if, if, uh, if RIT isn't able to keep momentum moving forward and Rutgers is able to bounce back, this is one of the harder spawn camps uh, in any map, but it seems like RIT is able to surf right on through. I'll be interested to watch King here because he is a Hanzo main. I, yeah, I noticed that as well. And, and this can be a very interesting map for a Hanzo, right? If you get that ult, it can do a good job of zoning things out because of these narrow alleyways. Oh yeah, but Blue Jay must know that because he took King early out of that fight, man. No DPS like that. It's going to be hard to stand or keep going forward, losing all that momentum. Vanguard in it there, looking for picks, looking for tickles, getting Wiz on it too. But that B drop there is going to keep Rutgers in this fight. King's back in the fight there, got revenge on that Tracer there, back picking out the monkey, he said, okay, leave me alone. I just want some space. <laughs> What a comeback, right? So, I, I mean, I have to admit, Vanguard was doing 
a great job of making space, and uh, I believe that RIT had a player advantage, but much credit to Rutgers for bouncing back. And between King and Parzival trying to take that space back, you know, it, I mean, they were crucial to making that happen. Do you guys think that um, <laughs> RIT is going to do the same thing? You think they're going to switch it up yet after this uh, this far out happens? Hard to say. I mean, yeah, Farah can be a little bit more difficult on this part, but uh, at the same time, Rutgers hasn't really d switched to anything except for Wiz on Soldier to really deal with it, right? Or you would normally expect Diva on on a, on, on this part of the map, but but it might be enough for Chokoman to stay. Clark just flying left and right. Dragons also wrecking ball out there, which really didn't get much done with it just because I don't think anyone was there to follow up, let's be honest. <laughs> so at this point, yeah, Chocoman has to make a very difficult decision. They have their roll. There's 60 seconds left, right? There's a nano available. They're going to so stick, maybe with, it. They gotta can... stick with it. Yeah, they, maybe they, they're waiting for the nano so that they can have Farah be damage boost and get a 50% reduction to stay a little bit, uh, stay alive a little bit longer, but... Huge. Blue Jay got Necrozis in the back there, no Lucio here. Is this the run? Is this the run, guys? There this it is. They, it. They, they, they had to know that, yeah, oh, Wiz is down. That's that's oh. what they were waiting for. They were yep. waiting now for Farrah sight. Now Farrah can be fire away, but it's not even necessary since Vanguard is going through with a massive primal. Vanguard has been extremely impressive. On this yeah, map shout out so to Kiwi for keeping the guy up. <laughs> man, Anna. That's what's up. Oh man. Move it out. And notice they they kept barrage. They had them spend soldier ult. And now they've made Wiz swap onto a Hanzo. <laughs> this is super interesting. Blue Jay's sticking with that tracer and I and, and I think they've been pretty efficient with them. Look at this backline harassment on the Hanzo and, and their supports. And even without the kills, the big thing is building pulse bomb gener making them press that. Which here we can see resulted in Choco Man getting a successful ult on back, which might be more than enough. Good space there, but no picks. Seems like we're fairly even in this fight. Despite no picks, Blue Jay was able to take advantage of Wiz being just out of position because of that, so... But still, this does not look like enough momentum for RIT to be able to cap. Oh, now it's the May man. They brought out the May. Uh, uh, they were pretty fortunate to make it out with their D.Va there. I thought that was the DMAC for sure. Yeah. So at this point, Rutgers has the upper hand. They also have Bongo and Maisel online. So at this point, they can just be very, very patient. Oh yeah, there's, there's barely any time left on the clock here. I think that that last hold there was what did it. <laughs> A valiant effort by Wisp as Lucio trying to uh, back cap that point and stall it out for a little more time. But ultimately, a very solid defense from Rutgers right at the third point. Score. I like the commitment uh, to the Farah. I'm I'm happy they committed. RIT committed to Farah. They were like, we're doing this. It's a pharmacy run. I don't care. I was like, all right, okay. And don't get me wrong, it worked for them for a lot of the stuff. I feel like it took a little long. So, you know, I feel like a lot of the times uh, the the team fights kind of just happened so long. Couldn't secure those picks early on, but. But the teamwork was there, so I'm, I'm interested to see what they're going to switch to now that they're on defense here. Yeah. And uh, to their credit, you know, they got they got far, right? Absolutely. Like, even if at the end, you know, they didn't get where they wanted to, they made a lot of progress. Like, that, that's still something to, you know, you can win easily off that one. Yeah. It's not like they got hard stuck at point A, right? Which is, which is yeah. extremely possible on this map. So, you know, just because they didn't take it all the way, just like you were saying, Gabe, it still could go either way. I'm very happy to see that Vanguard is staying on that Winston. I want to see more of it. 
And Chocoman staying on Farah. Farah, I said, this is the pharmacy run, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm now, here for it. I'm, I'm hoping. Do you think the Farah pick is uh, a little easier to accept if you have that synergy with your D.Va, who can now just zip around and sort of trail you and make sure, you know, you're okay? Absolutely. I'm honestly, I think yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's anyone there to, to really pull up with him, as you're going to say. What about you, Hypno? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm honestly surprised that that wasn't the way it was in the beginning, that that neither uh, Vanguard or uh, or Smash picked D.Va on attack to assist the Pharah or mitigate that damage. So I'll, it might be a lot more effective now. Doofus. And Wiz has traced it here. I guess just trying to divide and conquer, but I don't think RIT really has a, a comp that that's going to be extremely successful with, but they are still managing to get the picks here. Rutgers managed to get out Smash early on here. Huge pick with Mercy. In fact, just bullying everyone in the back line. I guess the divide and conquer did work out. I spoke too soon. Streamers curse, guys. <laughs> Honestly, this is exactly what we were hoping to see, right? We're seeing dive. We're, we're seeing oh. dive here, basically, right? So every now and then, it's, it does seem like they're isolating a particular backline character for RIT, whether that be Wisp or Kiwi, and they're able to jump right on top of them, split them up. Wiz is able to pressure point. This is exactly what, we, what I was hoping to see. I'm very happy about this. That was such a weird fight because they were like four different fights going on at any time. Absolutely. Yeah. Just because it's dive doesn't mean it's a uh, coordinated dive. Well, but, hey. I, as I said earlier, <laughs> the controlled chaos is a beautiful thing. But even that, like, you know, you had a fight on Mega underneath. You had the Tracer being chased to the other Mega uh, underneath the top. And then you had people fighting on high ground and on point. High ground and point, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy here. All right, here's the my least favorite choke in the whole game. Ooh, oh, man. You can see Wiz is basically bloodthirsty for the back line here. <laughs> Alright, so <laughs> at this point, R Rutgers is barely hanging on. Vanguard is able to, to flip it over by taking out Insane. Chocoman follows up with a huge ult on Necrosis and back, which then should open it up. But King is trying to just get a little bit more ult charge out of the situation. Um, or like, although I guess he's already got it, and just trying to survive and get out. But that was amazingly done by Choco Man, taking advantage of a very good opportunity. And it should be said that in that situation, you know, you always see the, oh man, an amazing ult by this far player who got six people. Getting two of their, you know, one of their main supports and their main tank is huge. It may not be six, but it led to all six going down eventually. I completely agree. Looks like a diva bomb from RIT mainly to make space and try to like slow down Rutgers a little bit. Which seems to have done the job because Blue Jay did take out back. Oh man, Parsifal is hungry Ooh. for this mercy. King getting the pick on Kiwi. That's to support out the fight. It's gonna be really hard for RIT here to stay in it. Mercy is gone. But then, oh, Blue Jay with a doom on doom crime. Oh man. <laughs> Doom on Doom Cry. I like it. That's, that's amazing. Can we get a hashtag no Doom on Doom Crime in the chat, please? <laughs> I don't I don't wanna see it. So Rutgers, I I've gotta say, Wiz is doing so much work here on the back line. He's oh, getting pulse bomb very, very regularly. They're <laughs> they're they're weaving in and out just when they're supposed to. A lot of credit. He gets stuck in the tree there for a sec. <laughs> let's not let's not speak of this. We'll talk about Everybody it. gets stuck in trees. <laughs> right here, the coalescence is coming out here. Looking for heals or looking for picks? I can't even tell. Everyone's so spread out here. Moria looks so pressed to keep everyone up. And Chaco playing this real nice, knowing that they have to more or less, you know, they could only go through the doorway or the archway. You having all that extra cover and back pocketing that barrage is gonna be huge. Wow. 
this is going back and forth so frequently. It's it it it's almost like we're they're they're trading just back and forth numbers here. Rutgers seems to have just edged out at the end there, but it's not like RIT Rutgers is going to give up without picks. a fight. Yeah, I think that that even when they are going you know kill for kill, I think Rutgers is getting the the kill style matter early on. Here we go in the final stretch. All right, of course it's out, instant out, Choco both Man supports. takes out two, both supports taken out for Rutgers. Ah, but Keen's coming back to Kiwi out the fight. That's gonna be really hard for IT to stay in this with just Lucio. They're gonna be able to... I don't that know. Was so close. That was a very, very clutch defensive Pharah ult by Choco Man there, taking advantage of a stranded, uh, Insane and Necrosis. Double meteor strike. Double meteor strike. No doom on doom. <laughs> oh, Ooh. King. Oh boy. Had to had to pay him back. Oh, he was yeah, on a mission. He was on a mission. The There's a double Jeopardy joke there somewhere, but <laughs> I'll avoid it. Yeah, I, it seems like RIT is just like, I feel like splitting them up, like you're saying, into these separate fights. We're having like so bunches of four different mini fights going on, and then you have your DPS who are able to like free flow between those fights that are all happening at the same time right? I think Rutgers doesn't know what's going on I think a lot of a lot of credit has to be given to Vanguard who is just making so much space and just causing so much chaos you know almost alone absolutely I, I, I totally agree Vanguard has been a huge asset for RIT's offense ooh what a wall is Vanguard in there alone? He, I oh, mean, no, basically, King Necrosis. was trying to trap trap RIT in there with him. Ooh, critically, Insane does get a kill on Choco Man. That is going to put a kink in the armor for uh, RIT's defense, and you can see Wiz is taking advantage by following up with the takeout on Blue Jay. Numbers are clearly in Rutgers favor right now, but RIT does have defensive advantage with having their spawn point right there. Smash the built up all oh, so fast there. Here it comes down to the wire. May ult comes right back down. Wiz comes out with a huge ult! Picking up yes. both the Diva and Diana and the Doomfist. Oh, Wrecky Ball just stalling for good measure. It's gonna be hard to follow up that. Oh, this poor Lucia. A struggle for RIT, and they aren't able to get out in time. Rutgers wow. gets it. RU takes Numbani. Oh my goodness, what a great take there. That was, that was I am some convinced. Team fights. Wiz is killing it. Wiz oh, is killing yeah. it. It's the first time I've seen a DPS get play of the game in a while, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, fair. Because that Zen didn't get it for right there. <laughs> right? Yeah. I was Absolutely. so surprised it wasn't Moira pressing E and right click and then uh, just sort of chilling out for a while. Every time. Every time. <laughs> I'm convinced they banned Brig just so she wouldn't get play of the game. <laughs> Brig's in a good place. I won't have that. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. I'll take, it, I'll take it back. <laughs> But boy, oh, yeah, so, uh, I mean, w what a wow. tight match. It was. These have been great matches to watch. Uh, and BK, what was your favorite moment from that? Oh my gosh. I, my favorite moment from all of that, honestly, Vanguard bullying those team fights. It was almost every time. I don't even think it's fair to count as one moment because he comes in there and he just makes it three fights. It's no longer one fight. You know what I mean? He just spreads it out to see to see the map play. Like every time we get in there and this team fight was happening, I'd be so silent because I'm like, 
I'm watching like seven people fight individually. You know, it's not seven, but you know what I mean. And and <laughs> Vanguard just in there tickling everybody. I was like, I'm a monkey fan, so a good monkey brings me joy. So honestly, seeing seeing Vanguard on that monkey there, especially in the last round there on on defense, was was super great. That was that was my highlight of that last game. Well, good it's choice. interesting that like you know we all sort of picked it out that Vanguard was just so aggressive. And so for everyone at home to know, we had all the team reps for, uh, from each team give us sort of like a quick, you know, two, three sentences on the players. And Vanguard's sort of uh, bio is just, will leap at first opportunity to punch a hole in the enemy's hold, verbatim. So oh my God, lives up verbatim. to it, lives up to it. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> Winston, well, no better hero to display this, like... Uh, really, really, really making space. And then just to piggyback, you have, you know, uh, just the DPS following through. Like, uh, I don't know. Oh my I, gosh, I, this I, is no, it. I, yeah. This is it. The leader. It, Doomfist is apparently the leader. I'm looking at this now. It makes sense. The dive. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, it yeah. makes sense. I see it now. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't think it, we could have asked for a tighter it. series. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I do have to, you know, like both teams have seem to have very excellent players, but I do feel like I have to uh, give commendations to uh, uh, to to, as I mentioned, like uh, Wiz, for example, being able to to be consistently like annoying, basically, as Tracer, as that helped a lot with 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 splitting things up between front and back line divvying up, taking one-on-ones when possible. Um, even Acrosis was helping out with that every now and then as Lucio by basically just trying to batter the Ana around and prevent her from doing her job, which is a very significant deal, especially when, you know, that Ana is going up against the likes of of, uh, of Parzival and, and, uh, and, and King, right? So much credit to a lot of the players on Rutgers and on RIT, I, Blue Jay and Choco Man. Right, a lot of people praise DPS for making very huge plays, um, but it shouldn't sleep on consistent DPS. And consistent DPS comes in the form of recognizing there's an opportunity, like one that Vanguard opened up for you, and just going in there and cleaning up what he's starting. Right, and in which case, I did see a lot of that from RIT. So, commendations all around. Yeah, uh, like I said a little bit ago, I mean, just a great matches, beginning to end, and honestly could have gone either way you know one team fight you know and who knows uh but let's uh let's move on to the next map what uh what are we playing that is the question yeah what are we looking at i'm all hyped i from believe Dubai. it is assault on temple of anubis mm -hmm. for some it strikes great fear to hear temple of anubis but for those like me, I love this man. Call I me like crazy. I, I, I like 2CP. It's Come bittersweet. I, just because I like 2CP doesn't mean I win when I play 2CP. But I do enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, biggest man. thing to know about 2CP, and I, I like to mention this from time to time, but uh, where, con like, basically... Uh, like uh, control maps, King of the Hill type maps, showcase individual capabilities. I personally feel on the opposite side of the spectrum, 2CP highlights team synergy, right? So um, in order to really take a point and keep it going, you need to fight as a team and win as a team. So, uh, so this I think will demonstrate how good Rutgers and RIT play at their most synergistic. Synergistic, can I have that on a hat? Yeah, I like that. Um, too many characters though, so too we'll have to wrap it up. Isn't that the name of a, of a police album? It sounds like a band uh, name. It's not. <laughs> what is that, Synchronicity? Oh, man. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> there you go. Oh man. oh man. You just boomed so... me, dude, in front of all of our Zoomer viewers. <laughs> got him. You got me. Got Rutgers here on defense with the Torb and the May. Love to see it. Love to see it. This is a beautiful setup here on the high ground. Great wall there, stopping RIT from pushing down that left side. 
or at least halting them for a bit. Now they have that time to rotate and get into a better position. Blue Jay still on the Reaper here, looking to get picks, looking to get through. These double shield tiers, really good back and forth fight. Wiz with the pick on Blue Jay. Nice turret positioning. I see you, Torb. <laughs> Did you see how aggressive uh, Wiz just walked out there? He's got the hammer out. The He's hammer? got the hammer out. With the hammer, pop off Wiz. <laughs> oh, the disrespect. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, no. Choco, man. Choco, man, listen to me. Don't worry about it, right? Don't sweat it. Everybody gets hammered <laughs> Don't every sweat now and then. It, Choco. It's okay. <laughs> It's another, it's another push. We got it. Just dust yourself off. Get back in there. It's cool, Vanguard. Leading the charge towards another direction. Trying to go on the right side here. Wonder if they're going to go all the way to the top. Maze not going to let him get through here easily. Oof. Right now, King is a little bit out of position. If Necrosis can take advantage of that and speed everybody in, this could be it. Blue Jay, baby, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh my gosh. Wiz taking everybody out with that Torb. Here comes the hammer again. He's just holding it down. <laughs> the second hammer. This, on, I man. told you that Torb is everybody's secret main. There's, it's That's it. I'm convinced. I'm not mad about it. I'll say that. I'm, no, I am not mad about it. I am living for this. This is it. Secret main. That's it. Torb, you're <laughs> So this is very annoying for RIT to get through. They've got to go through Ice Walls. they got to go through May Ult. they got to go through Sigma Ult. All right, Ruckles is not playing around here. At this point, RIT will need to decide whether they want to commit ults or not. It seems to be they, the May Ult came out. Wiz took advantage and took out Smash. At this point, no ults would be expected for RIT. It's, it's futile, baby. Choco, what you doing? <laughs> what you doing? Choco. You're on the back pedal. RIT, let's regroup. We're committing? Yeah, look at all these ults that are being committed on behalf of Kiwi and Smash. We do see that there's a Nano that came out. Sm uh, Smash's uh, Sigma ult came out. Unfortunately, it gets none. Oh, Wiz. There's that hammer. That's... Wiz. Rutgers is not playing around here. Uh, how disheartening is that? If you're RIT, you're pushing in and you decide to go right, and that Maywall just cuts you off and leaves you out in the open. Absolutely. Yeah. Take note, Blue Jay has switched over to Hanzo, probably to help deal with the May and the Torb, ult, uh, Torb turret here. Just if he can build up an ult in time, this would be really critical. Gets a huge oh, pick on Oh, that is in and of itself. Nice pick on the turret, which is what they needed to get out of the way, to be honest. Can't really make any room with that. Interesting position here. Uh, that, that dragon. Could really, really zone this. There's the dragon. Yep. Splits the team in half. Though. Now it's just a oh. matter of cleaning it up. Like clockwork. Very good decision for Blue Jay or whomever's call it was to switch to that Hanzo to deal with King and Wiz. Very well done. Absolutely, they needed to secure those picks there. It was no longer a let's let's push our way to the point. It was like, no, we need to get some kills. <laughs> Just one, and that one was all they needed. Yeah, it, it, it was a huge one, right? So by taking out Necrosis, right, Rutgers can't mobilize as quickly to regroup or defend themselves. So very strategic choice. Or a lucky Hanzo arrow. Those happen all the time. You know. We take those. <laughs> take all of those. All right, here, Rutgers committing their coalescence to get through this fight here. Finish what up is those Ana fights. doing? <laughs> there. Oh. <laughs> Falling victim. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught it, but after the wall, uh, Rutgers pushed up and uh, the RIT Ana Kiwi just ran behind towards point. Uh, sadly, leaving themselves open to a hammer. The Kiwi really think he, Kiwi was like, I got the back cap, I've got it! <laughs> As Ana. <Anna. laughs> 
like, no, bro, you're, it's not happening. Uh, that sounds, uh, that's that Lucio mentality on Anana. <laughs> Absolutely. My, my, my best guess is that was for a hard reset just to quickly get killed by the enemy team, but a little harder as that. Oh, no. Uh, there goes Man the Nano as well. Frozen. Yeah. I don't know if it was smart to pull in the, in the Doom with, with a May that's on point. Rutgers seems to be edging this one out, being very staunchly defensive here. Oh, the, the, the May turret, the, the May and the turret are so critical to Rutgers' defense here, just making it as irritating and as difficult as possible to even approach the point, so that by the time anyone from RIT actually makes it there, they've only got about 25 or 50 percent HP left, or they've been CC'd into oblivion. If you're Rutgers, I mean, you have to be ecstatic. You just got them to pull out Beat, Nano, uh, Dragon. For what? Yep. yep. For what? Not even a tick. You're right. Absolutely. Oh, okay, Blue Jay taking out King. I mean, that's a pick I'd like to see. Oof. This tank line has been killing it for Rutgers right now. Between Vac and Parzival. That bongo did a lot of work, right? Charging everybody's ults at the same time of being able to change momentum into Rutgers' favor, and then Vac had a pretty successful uh, Sigma ult there, taking out Choco Man. Here comes the stall choices for RIT. Uh. As soon as they made it, it was gone. The Here comes the final approach. A nano on Vanguard just to keep the stall counter alive, but he is riggedy wrecked. Ah, oh, the nice hammer again, poor Kiwi. <laughs> oh, no. The amount of sheer disrespect. <laughs> At this point, if you're RIT, if you're RIT, uh, you, you you've got to be you've got to be just trying to keep your cool. That must have been an extremely frustrating push at the end there. I don't know. I feel like I saw Rutgers it was a different team. I mean, maybe it's just because it's the game mode type. You know what I'm saying? But they were just so tight. They were not slipping up there. They were like, this is the map. <laughs> Their IQ shot up 100 points. 100%. That's what <laughs> it was like big brain plays. They were like, oh, we don't even care. We'll be cheese. I don't care if we have to be cheesy. I don't care if we have to do some tactics we don't like to see. They were they were doing whatever it took. RIT just wasn't adapting enough. I, uh, I, 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 I'm trying to think of, uh, like, I mean, aside from mirror comping on that second point, the only other thing that I can think of is uh, is perhaps maybe Choco Man or Blue Jay switching to something like like a, a May or a Sombra to be able to try and edge that way in and build a very strong ult. But I mean, Rutgers was just not making it easy. Even if they switch their comps, that might not have been enough for the amount of, of, of team play that Rutgers was putting out there. Oh, I'm, I'm personally comedy. excited to see this Junkrat action from Blue Jay. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> Choco Man taking that early pick on Wiz is going to be critical since Wiz is dangerous. Krosis did the best That's that it. they could in mobilizing the rest of Rutgers going up to that high ground, but. Unfortunately, before they could get there, Wisp mobilized his team, and between Choco Man and Vanguard, they were able to reclaim that space. Here's I'm just, a Pharah. I'm looking, I'm looking at RIT's comp, I, and I'm like, okay, I'm here for it. And then I'm looking at yeah. Rutgers, and I'm like, we're doing Pharah. We swap, we swap the May. We switch to Pharah now. Pharmacy, which could get us in there through this first part here. Really good at getting a little bit of distance, creating some space. But, um... Yeah. 
haven't really seen much for it. They're taking their sweet old time reclaiming that high ground from RIT there. Yeah, I mean, Farah could be a very good choice here considering uh, RIT doesn't have much to, to protect themselves against something like that. Oh, what a massive ult by Insane. <laughs> Not playing around. I'm sorry. I just can't. Oh. You're not playing around. <laughs> Two they minutes like... on the clock for a point A take. That means five minutes to overall to just get a single tick on point B. And we're not seeing, as far as I can tell, any hero rotations from Rutgers. Go there. Rutgers is stacked with ults. Here come the bomb. Dragons as well. Insane in the best position on this map for Moira here is right here. Yep. Insane has been driving a lot of this attack. Much credit to Insane for this. Uh, that's and it. There you, go. there you have it. All Rutgers right, are you? The map. And that's that's. That's a game three, isn't it? Yes, it is. That is a game three. So the first match goes to Rutgers, and I have to say it is deserved. And despite it being a 3-0 record, there there should not be any sleeping on RIT in terms of how well they performed. Now, they obviously had a lot of difficulty with that point B in both sides. But otherwise, with their performance on Numbani and on the control point, I'm still very impressed by RIT. But ultimately, Rutgers, very dominant towards the end. Seems they took a little time in the beginning to just sort of like work out the kinks of their teamwork and team play. And they were able to sort of drive it into the ground at the end. Absolutely. I mean, how I could really you not walk away impressed? Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> No, impressed is almost an understatement. Like I was about to say, like it's it's RT has the great, you know, the solo power. You could see it, but when when they needed to really come together, I didn't see that, and that was that was disappointing. When Rutgers needed to come together, boy, did they team up! It was like I swear, to, I want to know what those comms were. Like I want to know what they were saying to each other, man. Because when you know those T plays happen and they're just so on point, it's comms are crazy. They're beautiful. So I. I'm I'm super excited to see, you know, where this goes and to see these teams play throughout the championship. Like this is this is great. Uh, we go back to what Matt said earlier, where Vac was, you know, really really opening it up for the rest of the team, and the scouting report says, you know, vital member of the pre-planning for every single engagement, and you know, it shows. I imagine that you know, Vac sets a lot of things up and sort of preps for it and lets everyone know. And everyone follows suit. You never get that moment where, like, you know, you feel like you made a great play and then nothing happens because no one follows up with you. So, you know, <laughs> out the window. Uh, but that's not the case there. Rutgers was really, really, really decisive when they wanted to do something. Very much so. It, it, going back to the Anubis map, right? I mean, Rutgers made it look pretty easy on defense, right? Like, it was it was a really it seemed like a really well timed coordination uh between uh, uh like basically king and 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 wiz in terms of balancing between ice walls and torb pushes and 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 so on so like just very good cooldown management knowing exactly how long to be patient and then pouncing on rit hammer in hand taking down the rest of them knowing when rit was too low on resources to keep up with the amount of damage or the amount of uh, basically split up that uh, was happening to them uh, to the point where it just looked very easy uh, until, uh, you know, of course, the the Hanzo switch on our IT side, which turned things around. Oh, absolutely. Those May walls were so spicy every time. Like, honestly, I'm every, every moment, I'm like, okay. Thank you. Beautiful. Like the response to Rutgers there with really, really doing that. But then, you know, 
you get hit with the switches, you get hit with those with the with the Hanzo and making those really great picks there that changed uh, the game for IT, but they weren't able to have a really good chance on defense. I feel like it is pretty risky having having what monkey on on defense like that when you know what type of characters are gonna use. We know we're gonna see Ame again. Like we know we're gonna see these things. I don't I don't know. Maybe just stick with what you're comfortable with. Yes, you know Vanguard was popping off, but I don't know if the conditions were the same. For that in that last match there yeah i i'm like i said i felt through the first two maps that you know one team fight or two team fights would have gone differently it could have ended but i think rutgers was pretty 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 much the better team on anubis uh but also like matt said don't sleep on RIT. They they played really really well, and you can see the talent there. Like th they're going to do well this season without a doubt. Uh, I'm excited to see them play, and you know, just sort of getting into that rhythm again since there hasn't really been consistent play for most of these teams. I imagine with everything that's going on. Uh, but I guess let's uh let let's get ready for our next matchup. We I'm have. So ready. University of Texas and Ole Miss, Ooh. and yeah, super excited. Uh, both teams very, very strong, pretty balanced. Like, uh, I feel like this is going to be another, another pretty, pretty close set. Uh, yeah, and I, I mean, I just can't wait. Uh, but before we go there, let's uh, let's take a look at the hero bands for anyone who might just be joining us. So uh, just to reiterate, we are using the hero bands from last week as hero bands were chosen yesterday and went live today for this week. So in doing this, we allow everyone to get a full seven days and get whatever practice in they need and any excuse to get this great graphic up. Like oh, these, <laughs> these cute sprays are just the best. Oh, look at Dear Brig. Yeah. yeah, much credit to whoever was able to take the screenshots because that means you got the achievements to get them in the first oh. place, right? Yeah, Cute and then spray. at the same time, we'll give out some love to Stratus, our amazing graphic designer, uh, Bifuteki, Andre himself, running everything for us, and to Dearest Greg, who is just on top of everything in terms of observing, like really has caught everything that we've needed. So that's uh, just much love all around to the team. Yes, the OS gang. That's what's up. Here to represent yes. every people together, dude. It's all about teamwork. Yeah. We're a big family here. So That's and, and Overwatch is a is a team based game. So I feel like it just makes sense, right? Like bring everyone together, yeah. play the games, and like I don't know, have something to look forward to once a week. As <laughs> like and don't have much to look forward to right now, guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I hope uh you know some of you clipped you know some of the fun stuff we've seen tonight uh wouldn't mind watching back some of the hammers that inevitably were thrown down oh, uh, yeah. but be sure to use the hashtag osow os overwatch uh yeah when you post and please get it out there i mean let's uh let's provide the platform that all these student athletes you know deserve they are definitely deserving of this visibility for their capabilities and their talents and uh, yeah, absolutely share that out. If anyone does have clips, yeah, even, even post it in chat. I'd love to see those as well. Um, some great moments in there. I would just love to replay through those as much as possible. I know my head is only so good for remembering some of those plays. There was too much that was going on. These teams are too good. Like, seriously. You know, you do you do these tournaments or someone, you know, hosts a random tournament and you're like, okay, it, it's going to be fine. Who signed up? You know, what's your SR? And it's like, no, 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 no. We don't play around, all right? These these colleges, we got some of the top universities in here for eSports, all right? This is not soft, okay? We go all the way out. This is top tier, okay? This is as close as you can get to the league, if I'm saying. like, So I'm super excited to see all the matches going forward throughout the entire championship. And that was just the first match of the evening. Like, I, I'm, I'm whelmed. I'm perfectly whelmed. Let's go. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and just uh, to give a little love as well to the other you know schools that are playing this evening uh what else who else do we have we had hunter nyit that was going on at the same time as the match we just watched Rutgers and rit right now we have 
Texas and Old Miss. Also starting up soon off stream will be St. John's and Westchester University. And then after this match on stream will be UC Irvine versus Temple University. Uh, and off stream we will have University of North Texas versus Harrisburg. So we will have uh, a lot of good fun with this. Very exciting. All right, so here we go. We're UT versus Ole Miss, control point, looking like Li Jiang Tower. You know, Anna. I forgot look at all these Ooh. names. Okay. Oh, I'm going to butcher this. <laughs> yeah. It's a good reminder. Gen Gonzo. Uh. Okay. Oh boy. All right, let's see how if do we pronounce the one with the four? Hun how do four? we pronounce Mercy <laughs> <laughs> on, on Ole Miss's side? How do you pronounce Connie? that name? Han Connie? Is that supposed to be an A? I'm not good at the, t the letters. Oh, see, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a 90s kid. I know Lee speak. Oh, is. huge boop. I can oh, wow. oh. oh, my gosh. Wow. Well, Evil Knievel here is what I'm going to go with. And bam, what a way <laughs> to start the match. I, I can spell, spell with a huge ham and boop right off the bat. And you can I see he's the... taking the time to celebrate. Oh, That's... man. That name alone? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I'm... This is glorious. Okay, this is what this is what time we're on, guys. This is it. Boops from the start. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and curious, we're seeing the Ash. And I'll say for this and that. Everyone says quite the Ash player, so I'm excited. You don't, really don't see much Ash, you know, outside of this week with the bands. Mm -hmm. But uh, Ash is main, why not? Yeah. Ooh, nice dynamite uh, I, there. I mean, he's been popping up a little bit in Overwatch League. A lot of people are starting to see her potential. I can spell already has her, his ult and then is able to completely zone out Ole Miss from the point. Oh, man, but they... We're gonna let this Reaper get all these ticks here, committing the bomb is, as well. This is highly unusual. The fact that Ole Miss is fighting back between between uh, between having their hog on the point, taking F two. Here we go. Was that just now Bob and Anna? Yes. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit for a moment there it was. It was touch and go. It was touch and go. But they they hung out. They. Old Miss's Reaper Magic Pants was able to actually get around um, in the back line there and split them up for a little bit. So that was that was good for the stall, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, what are you supposed to say? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, really, really excellent Ash play to build up all that fast. Like, good lord. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah. a, that's a lot of consistent Ash dynamites being landed. Um, being able to mitigate that that uh, that King of Ding shield, Young gets a huge pick on Prince, getting a second one off of the Pop May on Kingazo. Being getting the Reaper too. This is this is good. This is looking great. Right, beat drop for Ole Miss here, just hanging in there. And I can spell drops another minefield. It's gonna be very difficult for Ole Miss to get back. Oh boy! Wait a flex! Ooh, way to flex, you see? Yeah. Okay. So very, very impressive first showing between I can spell there um, and and, uh, and between uh, this and that. Um, very, very strong showing from that. Not to sleep on on Hung or Bean either, because you know I, I believe it was Hung who started off with getting the pick on uh, on Prince and uh, and Bean just following up with some very good sleeps and splashes. So. Well done by UT on that first point. Hello. This is it. I'm, I'm team. I can spell. I'm sorry. It's just the pun is so good. I, I, I'm biased now. <laughs> I'm a personal fan of King of Ding myself. That's a great name. <laughs> Teleport uh, strat. Yep. I like King of Ding, like primary shot caller on the team. Yeah, it looks like that was the, the case here. And so they teleported straight to the point. Magic Pants laying down as many sentries as possible to make it annoying to even get to the point. Classic Magic Pants. <laughs> oh! oh! What a boy. shot! 
Oh my god! Can we get another god, one? Than that. Oh my goodness, what a oh, position! Man. Whoever oh, man, clipped me saying it. clip this earlier should be clipping that. Good lord. This is that was an incredible mobility from this and that, taking advantage of the upper upper ground, which normally would be a pretty vulnerable spot for Ash once the enemy team knows it's happening there. But the huge splash from Bean made it worth it. Ole Miss was just trying to stay alive, and this and that just had to click heads at that point. So good. Absolutely. Here we see Ole Miss doing the rotation around on the right side. Can't make it through the main choke. Hoping to push out through. Still go mid from here. Advati trying to make some room. Pushing in shields. Trying to get King of Dean into the right spot so they can actually make it to the point. Oh, they're flying out everywhere. Coalescence there. Just to keep Prince Ole Miss in this fight. Oh, and this and that again. The dynamites are just on fleek tonight. Oh man, taking the mercy too. Oh, oh, you almost had her. It was a very oh, good recovery by this and that. There was a little bit of worry because uh, Prince was able to take out Icon Spell, uh, which is a very big pick. Getting rid of uh, getting rid of that that, that Sigma, and followed it up with a very well placed Bob to keep that area clear. I can spell. What are you doing? This is the powerhouse. Orissa, Ash, Mercy, just just chilling on the point. I have to give credit to Arudi Tosa as well as uh, as Orisa here. Okay, Hannah's some very trying. dominant base control. All right, magic pants here. We got double bobs out. I'm so pleased that we're seeing Ash Ooh. versus Ash. Oh, no. okay. Young. That flanking Pharah. Oh, that's it. That is it. Whew. UT takes the point with some of the some incredible Ash and tank play. But it was oh. the boobs that get play of the it game. The I, I hope we get to see this play of the game I because so. can we can we please see it? Boom! Oh, <laughs> so much value. Oh man, we'd love to see it. Very good. Very good rollout for I can spell. I, you know, a, a lot of times it, it just happens. You know, I I I I can't blame Ole Miss. A lot of times you roll out on that part of Li Zhang Tower and you're just like, hey, watch for boops, watch for boops. And your eyes are in the sky looking for Farah for that concussion. And then you get just to the edge and you're like, we're good, no Farah. And then that wrecking ball just wipes out half your team or that Lucio jumps to your back line and bounces them off. And it kills you every time. Such a moment, such a motivation killer. It's the worst so I call can't blame out. Him. I hate it. I hate that call. Look for boops. Where? Everywhere. Like, <laughs> and then no wonder. And then I just walk off the map. See, this is why. Don't play cop with me, guys. Okay? This is what happens. Like, it's just not the map. It happens. Dust yourself off. Get back in there. It's fine. We see it. That's just one of them. You know, uh, it still wasn't bad. Just you get to shovel to the start like that. You know, how do you build that back up? Right? The moment after those boops, man. With Wrecking Ball, talk about humiliated, man. I wouldn't know how to come back. The moral is hard to keep up after that. So I'm thinking, go to the next map, shake it off. And I think we're going to see something really cool from them coming in the next one. I expect as much. I, I was starting to see some of the potential out of some of the people on Ole Miss. I saw that Prince was was doing very well as, as Moira, especially towards the end. Um, at that point, like, it was a little bit difficult for them because they had to heal a lot more than they were able to take advantage of, of their damage uh, capabilities with their ults and their and, and their orbs and so on. So uh, maybe we, they didn't get the chance to basically show how strong they could be on Moira. Um, but uh, but I'm I'm not counting that all, out at all. I'm I'm interested to see more of Magic Pants' Ash because I am convinced that we didn't get to see the full potential of it um, the whole time that they were playing Ash. They were kind. Ole Miss was sort of on the back foot, right? They were they were basically struggling just to be able to recapture uh, the space that they had lost, being able to try and get picks. Um, they're getting flanked by Hyung and Farah, right? So, I would I would assume the best is yet to come for Ole Miss in these upcoming maps. Oops.
Uh, sorry about that. Uh, but then what I was saying is that Magic Pants mirrors and does the Ash and builds up all fairly quick. And it was just a matter of like, what are, what's their role, right? You're trying to match the Ash, but then you also have the Farah. So now that's part of your job. So, you know, w what are you supposed to prioritize there? Very good point. It Right, so a lot of people think like, oh, there's a there's a Farah out there. Just go hit scan, take care of them. It's never that easy, right? Especially if they're a very good and capable Farah with ex equally capable tanks that are in your face the entire time, right? So it's going to be very hard to be able to do your job as Ash, take out the Farah while also laying down damage for the rest of your team to push through, right? So especially against an, an equally skilled Ash, job. right? Mm -hmm. Like knowing that you have to be at the top of your game to match your mirror but then just having this other responsibility of far dealing so much damage right that it's it, those aren't shoes i would want to be in right now but they're they looked to be getting there it just was maybe a little too late so i i am expecting a better showing from old miss on this map too old miss so so question is that so old miss you think Two for Ole Miss for the comeback. I'm I'm always here for an underdog story. Like I think so. I think they just didn't get the chance after the after that. So I I still think this is still pretty good. Yeah, I would say so. I, I think it was basically just uh, maybe that first map. I, and I and I think both of you had said this, but that first map sort of started off on the wrong foot. Just got to dust off. Move on to the next map. Pretend it's zero zero at this point, right? Uh, and and just play at your best. This is uh, we are now seeing that we are moving to Watch Point Gibraltar, and so I'm personally expecting that between uh, the picks that Ole Miss, uh, the the hero wheelhouses that they have, that they're going to be uh, picking some very interesting choices here especially considering the uh, high ground contesting and everything that they need to accomplish uh ut i'm very excited to see what their tank choices are going to be if this and that is going to stick with that ash which it looks like they're going to i'm pumped for this i'm expecting some more big plays out of both teams are we got hearing on uh genji here are we going for the nano blade for ut austin i mean we haven't seen that yet today, so I'm excited for that. Listen, that back on Ash as well. Good, I'd be disappointed after the last game to not yeah. see that. Uh, but Ole Miss is looking pretty standard, no? Uh, except for the Roadhog and yeah. arguably the 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 the, the Hanzo, uh, the Ash here. Yeah, generally standard. What I'm very excited about is UT Austin has hung on Genji. Oh. On defense, takes gets taken out immediately though by Magic Pants, uh, almost as if it was antici anticipated. Uh, oh, what a hook by Advait on this and that takes him off the high ground. Now, now UT Austin has lower damage overall. They don't have the dynamite. They're playing on the back pedal. What a huge pick! Oh, Hung is back there. Huge pick on Mercy as well as Hanzo. That's gonna be really good for UT Austin. I get still just coming in for his kick. Oh man, what that and splash. This is beautiful, this combo here, right? The dive with the Ana. I'm loving it. It's just Yeah. This is not your you should be at peak performance level. Oh yeah, it says here in the roster is Hyung. With Hyung. What? Yeah. Oh yeah, and Hyung, every time he gets a kill, apparently he screams, yes sir. So, uh, <laughs> be on the lookout that for that dragon player, y'all. So this is going to be tricky, right? Because although Magic Pants has Bob, Hyung also has Blade. Maybe Magic Pants might be waiting for a perfect moment, but Young's got to wait until that Bob is gone before he decides to play. That consistent that. damage on Arisa, it's good lord. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> Here's the blade, takes out yes, Connie, sir. takes out Magic Pants. And now Whatever it is, I need me rest. some. 
He is Lord. well young. Oh man, UT giving the good old spawn camp here. I mean, we'd love to see it on this map. I don't like Gibraltar, okay? I just, I don't like it. I don't know why. It's not that it's particularly hard. It just doesn't like me. Oh, that bomb in there. Oh man. No picks from it, but it did give them some room here. A lot of credit for Icon Spell again. On, being, on this Winston, he is doing an excellent job of Wait. prioritizing targets and cleaning things up. Oh, absolutely. I can suppose just bullying in the back. Look at it. Free. Free. The old body block. Good. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I can spell just primal, and he's already halfway to his next. This and that waiting on a bob. Do you send the Bob into this little hallway? <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Here's oh, the blade. Find yes, four. sir. Yes, sir. Five. Wow. What an incredible blade by Young. I had. I will not lie. I had my doubts playing Genji against. Uh, on defense against, uh, you know, where you have a May and, and uh, at one point they had an Ash as well, it would be normally somewhat difficult, but Hung has made very effective use of his blades and has survived very well. That coffin off as well, pick it up, Lucio. This is just the brawl right in front of the front door. Oh, oh man, wow. that is unfortunate. Oh, man. This is a merciless hold by UT Awesome, which may be necessary to keep Old Miss at bay. Between, I mean, <laughs> Old Miss has a very daunting, you know, end of level boss ahead of them in the form of uh, I can spell and this and that. Not to mention Young. That it's it's gotta be so difficult to go against that. And and Bean's Ana splashes have been so effective. It, it they they have been hitting consistently two or three targets right in the height of the battle, forcing Ole Miss to have to back up, cover, shield up, and Hyung is already in their lines right clicking on their their purple squishies right extremely well done by ut austin they're definitely being merciless but that might be necessary at points like these uh we should say this uh ut team is the team that won the uh battle for texas that was hosted by dallas fuel so you know they have experience they're tried and true you know they're tournament ready so to speak uh and what we can get from all this is that they're not scared uh you know and obviously day one super super early but you know i can see them finishing very high in these standings i i, I definitely see it they i mean they, i think you said it they look and seem fearless they're 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 aggressive for sure uh they launch forward as much as they can, and it, it looks like their strategy is just purely overwhelming the other team. And it's working. They don't have to go very far here. This and that looking for a key pick. There goes the dynamite, takes out the turret. Another enormous splash by Bean. Oh, wow. This, this and that and Bean have been just on the same wavelength. Just perfectly being able to take advantage of each one of those anti-nades from Ana, from, from Bean. And this and that just has to left-click the rest of the way. They're coming with a small character. Oh. Trying to hold on. Oh. <laughs> Ole Miss oh tried. Oh my goodness, it was over before it started! Ole Miss! Uh, Ole Miss tried so hard, but Bean Splashes were so incredibly good that uh, it, it's hard to recover from that, right? Poor Hani. Here it comes. Yes, sir. Oh, let's look at this blade. Oh. Gets hooked, only has 50 HP, but manages to slash away! 
and take Great Guga Muga. Five. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> incredible! What? That was that was a treat to see from Young. So good. I, I mean, it's it's usually a, a rare treat in general to be able to see a Genji, let alone capitalize on ults that much and not switch to another May or Reaper or Doomfist uh, because of being stymied out too much. So I was very happy to see that play. I, what do you say? Uh, I thought Old Miss showed a lot more promise on Liu Zhang. Uh, don't want to be the one to say it, but I didn't see it as much in this map. I did not. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they're up against stiff competition, so don't let it reflect poorly on them. But it's still just like, look at how far they got. Like, that, that's really it, right? Uh, and, yeah. you know, they were, they just kept getting the fight brought to them walking out of spawn. Yeah. Right? They were not Very able fresh. to pass that initial threshold. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, Gibraltar, man, right? You get, you get on the map. You know, once you get in that trap, there's a few maps in this game that are that are really like that with the spawn traps. And that one is hard. There was only so many ways to get out of that spawn room, you know? So when you see them there and you're getting stuck at the front gate and, and you're not flexing you know, and trying to switch things up or at least like stop feeding the old charge. Like, let's just sit and spawn and and think about something for 30 seconds <laughs> rather than going out there and feeding at some point. Like, let's figure it out. You know, I didn't see much adaptability from them, which is what we were hoping for after the first game. You know, they just need to adapt. They'll figure it out. But I, I don't I don't know. I, maybe someone went to sleep. Maybe a little AFK. I hate to be that guy, but Jesus. Old <laughs> Come on, I mean, your girl was I, hoping. I, yeah, I, 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 I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of Ole Miss to try and figure out like how do you even how do you even begin to deal with the likes of Bean and Young and uh, this and that and this and that, right? Like it, at that point, you might want to like the considerations that you might want to start having is okay, these these splashes are killing us, right? So maybe something that can then then basically nullify Bean's capabilities. I have to say it again. I'm always going to say it, but hey, that's where D.Va sort of shines, right? So having a, a, a D.Va come in and being able to to focus on just shutting down Ana more than anything else or being able to eat the dynamite, be, being able to, to, to just try and eat up as much of those projectiles that this and that and Bean were throwing their way. And then as far as being able to deal with Hung, well... That that's a different story too, right? That that becomes very difficult. Um, Prince, you know, was doing a lot of good work uh, as 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 Moira as best as they could. Um, sticking with that against a Genji is usually a good idea. Try to pressure that Genji so that they're not annoying you as much. Um, but still, they are formidable, even if you do pick the right heroes. So you know, Ole Miss looking like an underdog right now, but that doesn't mean that they get counted out. Might it be the bands? I'm looking here. It says Ole Miss is a Rhine main as well. Uh, King yeah, Kings, but, he, so. but even then, I think I would have rather taken the Sigma there over the Orisa. There's just wrong. too much verticality where the Orisa shield, you know, we know it, it's not as strong as it once was. But also, you have the movement, the ability to move, place your shield in different places with the Sigma, which you, you don't get as much with the Orisa. That's a very good point, right? So, so even though Sigma's shield is a little bit weaker, right? Um, you know, the damage that you're trying to protect against is mainly like I can spell on Winston, which isn't going to be a big deal. Your your biggest source of damage is going to be this and that. Um, in which case, like uh, being able to juggle between your uh, your your shift ability as Sigma to be a, 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 almost like in a diva sort of way absorb some of those projectiles and that damage and so on and being able to juggle that shield is it going to be a little bit more effective than uh than trying to just push with orisa uh and getting splashed behind or 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 so on dynamite overhead oh, wow yeah that spawn dynamite there i saw those ticks we see you this and that all right all right yeah, i like this map this is this is a good map holding right on they're point sticking there. with this orisa which, uh, you know, let's see. Yeah. It's Swarm. Free. Look at these headshots. Just absolutely 
free for this and that to take heads. So you guys are not even looking at the high ground. I'm sorry. I'm getting that's... passionate now. <laughs> well, we go back to what, what you were saying, where just like a diva would have been so handy there. Even if it's just a quick, you know, fly up and just try and move the ash off the high ground and drop back. Like, not say you don't want yeah. to expose yourself. But like, even the threat of it is better than nothing. It's, you know, really is what's happening now. Yo, yep. This and that is so comfortable on that little perch. Look Jeez. at it! Look at it! Oh my gosh! Ash hard carry! Here it is, boys! That damage boost, right? Deals a, an intense amount of damage, and Arisa has a gigantic head. So, two shots is all it takes from this and that to take them down. Before, you know, maybe King of Ding is able to even hit the fortify button. The, the guys, biggest thing that I think is interesting here, oh, yeah, yeah. So, what I think is also extremely interesting is that at add bait 124 is sticking with the hog, right? And the only value that you're going to get with that hog is in between in these hog hook combos with King of Ding on Orisa, but I haven't seen that happen at all yet. Have you? I mean, it's kind of hard to combo when your Orisa's dead. That's so. true. You know, That's very true. <laughs> not gonna you sugarcoat it. it here. Yeah. You said it. No, straight up. It's it, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. We're not seeing it fast. We're not seeing the move fast enough. We're not tight enough for for the Arisa play they're trying to do. At least I I feel like they're trying to play. You know that tight knit comp. They're not moving as a unit fast enough. They're not getting to where they need to be in a better position. They're just staying in the same spots. The sight lines are free. Ooh, this and that coming close to death on that last approach. And keep in mind, right, Ole Miss has a Lucio. UT doesn't. So Ole Miss has the speed advantage if they wanted it. But unfortunately, they just can't take advantage of it. Huge eat by Arudatosa on the May ult there. Oh, that's game changing. Ooh, nice pick on the Lucio. Spicy. This and that is popping off. Oh my gosh, can't we get another one? Old Miss oh hanging in goodness. there with the coalescence. But Sites comes out for you and just finishing them off left and right. They're going to be able to hold this. Come on. Two left and the res. All right, way to flex, UT Austin. Way to flex. Magic Pants, Magic Pants did their best in trying to put up a fight there. That Death Blossom did take out quite a few people. You can see that Magic Pants is now switching over with 40 seconds left to Symmetra. So I'm expecting that there's going to be a very interesting teleporter play in this move right here. And it looks like they're going left. They're doing the teleporter strat. This could be I'm with or it. it could be awful. Oh, they I, were waiting. I think you gotta, you gotta try something different, right? You can't just keep walking into the wall. There we go. I can spill out. Can we make it to Old Miss trying to fight this? Beat drop to keep him in the fight. Rotating here to point, trying to stay in a good position, playing tight but to Ash the Arisa shield. Just... But Ash is laying into them. No contest on the Ash there. Princess manages to pick this and that off. There's no PPS there for Yuki Austin. The ability to get this last pick. Off for the scuttle. Oh, this is close. Neck and neck. Ult are coming out here. This and that. Back in, in the spot. Laying into everybody. Oh. oh, man. Oh, he thought he had it with oh. that hook, too. My goodness. What an incredible play. That I... I I mean, pretty much at that point, right, we had, there was so much going on, right? And, and, and this and that, and I can spell dominated what, I mean, to back up a little bit, right? I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm like getting chills from what just <laughs> happened, uh, right? There was a very, very good idea. Just like Gabe, what you were saying, sometimes you just have to switch it up. And it was starting to be very, very effective, right? They took the teleporter around the far left side. They took a very defensible position on that upper left platform on the point. What became a little difficult is that they just couldn't get the range they needed to take care of either this and that or Hyung. Right? And that's a lot of damage heading your way in the form of Ash and Soldier. They're both pretty good at long to medium distances. So when you have that situation going on, dropping down to the point, understandably you have to cap, but without something like, uh, like you know, 
your Lucio going back and forth to, to contest the point to keep it going until you get a pick, it's it's extremely difficult to to, to, to take it over. Like, it was a great idea by Ole Miss um, that sort of just fell apart, unfortunately, because once they dropped down, UT Austin just swarmed upon them from two different vectors. And it was difficult to even stay alive, let alone get picks and keep the point. Let's see. Okay, so we have the Lucio, the Winston, and the Diva. I like it. They're clearly sticking to the Ash. Hey, you got Ooh, it. the junk. Junk could be good to get that him low. Dynamite. Every dynamite. I swear this has not missed one. See, but here we find ourselves where we did the end of the last match. They just. Right? How do they clear the top ground? Already a bob? Are you serious? This is the mercy boost. The mercy boost. Ash, I'm telling you, getting a bob within the first what? Thirty seconds of the match? Forty seconds? Oh my god! My goodness. That that tick almost completed there. I I I have to give so much credit to B. That was incredible. That's why we were a round of applause. Oof. UT Austin takes their second game, and, and there are a lot of questions in chat regarding what the this is playing to. It's it's first to three wins, wins the match. Yeah, so it could be once, like I said earlier, it could be done in three, could be done in four, could be done in five maps, could go more. You know, you can tie on certain maps. So first to three. Not Look play. at that damage from Ash. This and that on Ash. And keep in mind, right? They didn't see, no, neither team saw second point. That's 15k damage on just one point. Yeah. That's crazy. This and that was incredibly effective. Now, granted, a lot of that was damage boosted, right? They had a mercy being able to damage boost. Those, those damage boosted dynamites and headshots were able to bring Bobs in practically every minute. And not to mention, I said before, I th although this and that definitely got a lot of attention, my favorite player from that 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 was playing on UT was Bean. Bean's Ana was incredibly good with getting huge anti nades. That this and that was able yep. to safely just pick away at a distance. Mm -hmm. And even on Lucio, it seemed like. I mean, obviously, you know, I don't know their comms, but it seemed very clear that Bean was a very dominant force in moving. UT to the point, getting two key eliminations, finishing off two key kills, and then therefore allowing his team to mobilize and take defensive position away from Ole Miss once they were staggered. So I applaud Bean very big on that. And I and I I uh I wish the best for Ole Miss. That was probably very hard to play against. Oh, I say kudos to them. Like <clears throat> to be honest, they still fought hard to the end. You know, when you're combating such such strong um, opponents like like UT Austin in, in that last match, they like that was just it was so obvious. They I didn't see um, Old Miss actually show defeat every time they really were trying at that last match to try to switch it up. You know, with the TP around the side, let's try a different tactic here. Let's let's hold in this new position. Like they really did put a value. Up. So honestly, kudos to them for for holding out strong. Because if that was me, man, I would have. Ash free like that? I would have rage quit it 20 minutes ago. Let's be real. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm i actually real curious. And like, you know, UT did come out as the better team here. Uh, but I want to see Ole Miss next week where they can flex that Rhine, right? They can, mm -hmm. you know, play the heroes that are banned this week and see. Because I, like I said, we saw it a little bit on that first map when they mirrored and they, they sort of came back on Li Zhang. Like, they made it interesting. I want to see them with a different hero pool, right? With, that, with the bands that we have this week. Absolutely. Yeah. Hong is and also as a reminder a for main. that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was saying, yeah. I'm looking at the roster here. Hansa, Hansa Brig main. We've got, you know, King yeah. of Dings or Rhine main. Like, those could be serious, you know, parts in them and seeing them. So, you know, unfortunately, yeah. we need to see that team use those characters this time around. Uh, I... I want to see them. Uh, I'm going to withhold judgment 
completely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Because, yeah, you know, it's week one. Yeah, for everyone. Uh, just going to report in as well. It looks like we have NYIT beating Hunter three games to two. So we missed the first full series, but, you know, we'll be back. We'll be back. We'll Sounds catch like some more. In a close game. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. Plenty, plenty of season left. This is only day one. Thanks again for joining us. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's move on. Let's uh, let's, let's get the show on the road. Let's see where we're at. So I believe the next match that we're going to be observing is UC Irvine versus Temple University. Yes, and uh, both really strong rosters. Uh, you know, really well run programs, and I expect this one to be closer than that last series was. So let's uh, let's see let's see. Yeah. This is so. Good. And as a yep. while we're transitioning, as a reminder for anyone who is tuning in right now, uh, this is going to take place over the course of seven weeks. After which we are going to take the top eight uh, teams and have them play off in the championship. So while we are broadcasting these games right now, we are simultaneously, as, as Gabe had just mentioned, we, we are simultaneously having other matchups taking place uh, online. They are just simply not being broadcasted at this time. Yeah. Uh, but don't worry. Uh, we will have your favorite school in the tournament be on stream next week or the week after. We will rotate around, and everyone is going to enjoy the stage that is Operating Systems Collegiate Championship stream. That's cool. I'm super excited. The teams have been so good so far, and we have so many it, more yet to see. It's been so. such excellent gameplay. And like, especially seeing the Ash come out of nowhere, right? And it's one thing to play Ash if that's what's going on that week because of hero bands. But it's another thing when it's actually their main. Yeah. So It's like, my time. Yeah. My time has come as an Ash player. You must be thinking <sighs> so yes that's yeah. uh that's not something i yeah uh well <laughs> let's uh on that note let's uh we're gonna we're gonna throw it away we'll be right back uh we're just gonna give the teams a second to sort of gear up and get ready and then we'll jump right back into it
Howdy. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Look at that. I'm looking at this new look. Okay. Uh, I mean, my, my swag with the bun. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this last match. I got to make sure to get the sweat out and, you know, so get a little more ventilation. Was Gabe, which <laughs> which was, South American soccer team do you play for? Because I think that's uh, right now. Independiente del Valle, the best team in South America, <laughs> right outside in the suburbs of Quito. <laughs> oh, awesome. I'm getting right into it, too. This is what I like to see. Oh, yes. Chat, right, so, get hype. I am very hyped, right? So, so every one of these matches is going to be starting with a control point. And here we can see we've got UCI Esports versus Temple. And we've got some pretty standard loadouts on each side, except for Hog on, on UCI. That's interesting. Oh, yep. So we're, we're starting off with a pretty defensive approach here from, from UCI side, but a huge splash makes things a little bit difficult. And it looks like a pretty decisive first take for UCI unless anything changes. Killshot does get a kill on that tracer, but otherwise they have numbers. Chow, much, much love for Temple in the chat here. See a lot of Temple stands. Nice. Uh, All right, I'm very excited to see how this hog play goes. Like they, they've acknowledged that the that the Temple has Reaper, and uh, you know, unless you play hog a, a little bit more cautiously around that, he could end up being a pretty good ult charge for that Reaper. So, uh, but you know. That's not to, to say that Safrona won't be able to come help out uh, AGO on that, so we'll see. Ooh, huge purple! Oh, what a huge purple! 
All right, Hell Judge. Okay, we see you now. Oh boy. We're paying attention. I have my eye Lightning. on this Ana here, on Hell Judge here. These are some very critical moves. The positioning is excellent. Support, you know, is is there. Goes on the offensive when needed. That splash earlier pretty much made the play. Already, that's a lot of check boxes for me. I'm so goofy here. UCI is stocked with ults for this next push. Temple's really got to pull it together here. Got to charge some ult charge right before this. Kill shot will have Bongos coming up in this next fight. So UCI has got it first here, getting picks. <laughs> Temple, all right. Both DPS on. They nano the even. hog. They nano the hog. Huge splash from Hell Judge. Stadium's only got one HP though. Numbers Stadium, are on tried. Temple's side. You really try, Stadium. I saw that. <laughs> Please. Oh man. So okay. now Temple, you know you have more or less one team fight, right? And if you lose it. That's more or less the mat, uh, right? The point. Yeah. Not, not only do you have one team fight left for UCI to take it over, but you also have to conserve your bolts for as long as possible. So that purple. Really how to use them. What a great nade there. It was. Oh. Huge Sigma oh, ult done by Noob by there. He oh, finishes up is... with a Death Blossom. This is massive for Temple. They get to keep the beat. They're halfway to Nano for the next one. Not only that, uh, Killshot has Bongo, right? And so that will help those who've already used their ults get them back again if it's an effective Bongo, right? So this could be, yeah. this could be a really good play for, for Temple right now. Oh yeah, Temple's stacked right now, man. We've got Bacon on that May ult, hold it in the tug. Like, I'm waiting for it. There goes the Bongo. Go. At this point, they're yep. going to play a little bit defensively and wait to pounce. Bongo gets taken out by Fade. Being aggressive here, which I like. Yep, definitely necessary here because the Orisa is yeah. isolated. Yup, is looking to get some left clicks on the Hog. Oh man. I'm. These are just huge nades on the side of Temple. Gunstrings, you know, yeah. matching Hell Judge. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I don't know that I would have said that after, you know, the first 90% of that. Oh, absolutely. Much Temple's credit to Temple right for being able to adapt that quickly. Oh, so this is an offensive game. Lucio ult. And the defensive here. blizzard. Yep, it gets eaten. Fade. Fade it up. Even though yep. that fat nade. Fade! With all of that finishing off each one of those kills. Oh man. 5% left. Let's see. It's 90, 97 to 99. Know, Can somebody get there? Oh. No. Extremely close though. Yeah. That is a very promising start for this match. That was a great match. That was a great game. <laughs> that was a great yeah. game. So I, this, is, this is super exciting. I, I'm curious to see as to whether a, a Go or AGO, not sure, apologize, um, is going to be... Uh, okay, they've already switched to D.Va, which I think is a good point. Because on that first point, sticking with Hog, going against Gunstrings, and going against the Up is going to be very, very difficult. Not to say that he's not an amazing Hog. But it's just why you know why try to climb uphill, right? So, so this switch to Diva is probably going to be a lot more helpful. And here we've got a pause, so hang tight. Probably some technical difficulties going on. Let's see what's going on here. I'm I'm looking. So BK to Gabe, what are you, what are you thinking so far? Uh, it, that was honestly one of the better matches we've had played all night. Like there was just so much from both sides there. Uh, and it, it really looked one-sided for most of it. And then all of a sudden, the momentum just completely went to the other side. And Temple played every engagement so smart, where they took they took the spot they wanted, and then they were aggressive when they saw the person at a position that they could just collapse on. And they did it time and time again. And it was just unfortunate that 
you know, alt economy ended up where it was, where UCI could push in with all of those resources. And while Temple threw everything they had back, it, you know, they just came up on the wrong side. Yeah. And what about you, BK? What are you thinking? I agree. I think, I think Temple is is a good team. We we saw that when they finally got their their chance to to take the point. We could see how they play. So I'm I'm really looking forward to the next match. Um, UCI just really had the the picks. I think really just had the 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 old management, like you were saying, Gabe. Like they were able to just throw them out when they needed to, not expend them when they didn't need to, and. Temple was kind of always reactive, I feel, um, once they didn't have that point presence. They they really didn't um, initiate anything uh, super strong, but they are super good and responsive. So I, it, it's two different types of teams, I think, we're starting to see here. You know, we're still kind of learning these teams and these rosters. So, you know, it's hard mm -hmm. to really say what their predictable play style is. However, from that first match, I'm... I'm honestly really surprised how it played out. I, I thought it was going to be a steamroll. I really did. So uh, Temple's giving me give me a run for my money. I'm I'm gonna have to back Temple on this one. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So th I, that's my vote here. Yeah, I I I have my eyes on both the honest because it seems like a lot of the biggest plays happen from from from. The honors on both sides from both UCI and Temple. Right, Hell Judge opened it up and pressed us first with a huge splash, being able to take advantage and the gap in shielding on on, uh, on Temple's side. But then all the same gun strings followed it right back up. It was tete-a-tete. -tete. As soon as Purple was landing on some of these people, you can see that that uh, that we've got you know, Donache moving and we've got, uh, you know, a lot of movement following up on prioritizing those targets. And that's where the team fights went. So. I'm very excited to see what happens next, not even just in this control map, but even in the uh, payload maps and control point maps going forward. Oh, thank you, Gabe. You're literally like, yeah, keep in mind, you see, I only need one win to win this, correct? <laughs> thank that is you. correct. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so let's see what they can do here. I I like this point a bit more. Um, out of these sets, I think I think this point is really nice. Um, I'm interested to see what what kind of cops we're gonna get here. Tracer? Yep, on the on the tracer. Okay, gonna combat fade maybe. Maybe try to do that one v one there. Fade was popping Possibly. off last round. Bacon on Genji. I'm really excited about. Um, Danishay was definitely laying down tons of damage as soldier, so more of that. I'm still so confused about the hog choice for a go. Especially from what I understand, I think they're a diva player, right? So I'm wondering what the call is here with 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 hog. Yeah, that's a an interesting choice, and I... oh well, you know yeah, what? Well, have to there answer. it goes, right? Yeah. yeah. That pick is what they needed to get this started. So let's see how Temple responds, not having yuck. Donache gets a huge pick on Lucio. Fade follows up on the Winston. Kill shot taken out. And now it's too much damage for Temple to deal up with. This is a lost fight. They're backing out in the group bank. I know chat's going so off on me. They're like, dude, UCI, this is this is them all the way. <laughs> no longer temple in the chat right now. I'm getting personally attacked. I'm sorry, guys. The, the silence is because I'm trying to say you've got a room for the underdog. I want I want to see him break it. We can take a round. Can't have hope. Not with Fade and Danchi popping off like this. Two picks right off the start of this push. Mickey, oh, what a sleep back on said. Fade. Huge sleep, sleep on Fade by Gunstrings. I'm, I'm gonna keep coming back to these Anas. Like the play from both has just been so so high. Indeed, both of them have nanos at the ready. Yup, takes out the stadium, which is huge. Right? Okay, we have a nano visor inbound. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Donache uh, did what he needed to, right? That's what I was going to say. I was like, it got the job done, you know? Fire. Yep. Okay. I was going to say, a little late, but, you know, that's why you get a D.Va, right? For moments to just eat up damage, and, like, we just haven't seen enough people just using it. 
Yep. New by doing their, their best, they were not around to be able to handle that Donache visor. Which is probably why Donache took advantage of that. We might be uh, we might be seeing a, a Genji ult, a Nano Blade soon, in the form of Bacon. Oh man! Oof. Maybe not. <laughs> that's, 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 that, that's that. That's it. That's that is. UCI it. takes first first map map. Yep. So that was an interesting. So I mean, the first part of that map, right, was a hundred to ninety nine. Right. It was very much back and forth, very close match. Maybe you know we can allow for, for people trying to just sort of like find their footing, get their grounding and so on. And then that second one, it seemed pretty one-sided, right? Um, I'm, I'm, maybe I lost track, but I, I, I didn't see too much value coming out in terms of like Genji ults or so on. Uh, we saw that Donache wasn't really contested nearly as much as he probably could have. Uh, Fade was being annoying on the form of U in, on UC uh, I's side, um, and I I I'm pretty sure New Buy was doing the best they could in damage mitigation as Diva, but uh, yeah, I I made the mistake of being confused about the hog choice on <laughs> on UCI, and it ended up being pretty clutch in multiple moments. Although he definitely I I didn't get the impression that he was super hooked up with uh, uh with the Orisa moves, but you know, shoe is in my mouth because that is shoe is in my mouth. That's not the expression at all. What am I even talking about? So sorry, I'm but just anyway, sad over here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Chaz coming at me for rooting for Temple. Temple didn't pull through on the rounds. Now I'm over here jaded. It's fine. <laughs> look, 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 look. I'm just trying to give some love. Okay, I know what it's like to be in that position. You got some really like all stars on on tempo right like we're talking about the honor there like that is some top tier play there so i i feel i resonate as you know a take or a support man when you rely on your team you're like okay cool we could do this and then when when it when it comes to crunch time you fall apart man like that that's what happened there and i think different map type i think we can give it a chance i'm still i'm still holding strong for tempo again it's week one okay guys you yeah. can come at me next week <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to come at me next week for UCI? That's fine. But for now, Temple's in this, right? This is round two, okay? Yeah, and let's uh, <laughs> let's not let gun strings get lost in there. Uh, there was a lot of great Ana play. Uh, it's unfortunate the team, you know, it, they weren't getting enough healing in, in some way, you know. But their Ana play was really good and was matching what was going on from UCI. Yeah. Uh, I, I think... Temple's DPS were having some difficulty, but I don't know that it was necessarily due to their capability at all. I think it was just mainly due to the capabilities of the tanking on UCI's side or Hell Judge's capabilities as Ana or the, you know the Lucio being able to to, to help out when needed. It, there was a lot that was going on in that situation that doesn't speak to necessarily Bacon or or Yup's capabilities. I think they're very capable DPS. They just didn't get the opportunity to show their stuff because they were always on the back foot. So I am hoping to see what it looks like when momentum is in Temple's favor. But UCI, at least for that last point, was very dominant and and uh, displayed how capable they really are as an opponent. That's Junkertown. Junkertown? Oh, man. I have some friends who would roll over for this being the map right now. Uh, all right, all right. I love Junker Town. I love it. I like it. I it's always it's 50-50, right? Either you love it or you hate it. I feel like there's those maps. <laughs> <laughs> Ready. Oh, man. What are we gonna see? No Farrah here? But maybe some Torb. Oh. We love to see yeah. Torb here at OS. You know it's a secret May. Okay. I'm so super curious as what the game plan is. Do you think they're going to go pirate ship, Torb pirate ship? They are going double shield with uh, with kill shot and new buy, so it's possible. They've got gun strings on Batiste, which is another key component of that. They're just it seems like they're planning to use Torb instead of Bastion. So I'm curious if this is what they stick with. But I am ex I was expecting some long distance damage, and we are seeing that on UCI side in the form of Fade and Downache. So. Let's see if uh, Temple can even get close. Oh yeah, chat's living it up for Bacon. Apparently Bacon is the best Torb main NA. We'll, we'll have to see it. 
<laughs> Keep your eyes out for Bacon in this next match. <laughs> Pirate Ship Torb is the new meta. Yep, turrets on the payload being protected with shields. A huge accretion stuns out. A go. Huge picks being done by Fade here on the Batiste. Gunstrings is taken out. At this point, it's just a matter of getting a lot, enough damage. You can see that, that uh, Fade is getting extremely close to their ult. Donache is taking out people as well. It's clean up at this point, but this was a very aggressive defense between Fade and Donache. And it seems to have paid off rather significantly as both of them uh, Fade near their ult, Donache halfway to his. Bacon only a quarter of the way since they weren't able to get a lot of value out of their turret. No way. Lots of uh, dashy love in chat here. So uh, I'm hoping to see uh, this Hanzo pop off. But it's looking like Fade is already stacked with Bob. Here it comes out as soon as I speak of it. Nice pull. Taken. Another aggressive response between Fade and... I'm going to change up the way I pronounce this because I think I it's know. wrong. I was saying Donache is because it's spelled a lot like Donache, but I'm going to say Danachi. Is it Danachi? I thought it was like Banshee. It looks, it looks like Danny Banshee at the same... I'm wrong? I don't know. Help, help a girl out. Then... <laughs> Danny. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> All right, chat. Danity. We're sorry. All We're right. sorry. We'll have Danity. it right next week. We promise. <laughs> like cheese. Dan cheese. Fade. Uh, yeah, Fade takes out two. Gunstrings is falling to Fade pretty consistently. It's probably frustrating for him. Absolutely. I mean, we've and, seen this before, right? Oh, uh, uh, how but... unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> I would say we've seen this before. The the auto mercy is is absolutely dominating here. It's gonna be a powerhouse to uh to mess with. I I'm not sure how to how to tackle that. We're gonna have to single them out or something. Switch it up because we're not getting past this choke here. Temple is really getting stuck. Yeah. It seems Bacon has switched over to May. I'm assuming to sort of mitigate some of the damage that is coming in the form of Fade and Danichi. Um, but it's only temporary. Both of them are relatively mobile enough that an ice wall is not going to slow them down, and they are long distance, so it's going to be very hard for Bacon to be able to get close enough to actually make a difference here. Temple needed that. Yep, is able to take out Danichi. Let's see if that swings the momentum the other way around. That's their. So, that's the matching rest. matrix. <laughs> matching matrices, matching bongos. Ooh. High damage Ooh. versus high damage. And then Bob, and then Bob, just to flex. Bob shows up to the party in his best tuxedo, just to regain some of that space. And ultimately, UCI is taking it back with a plum. I mean, that was the best case, right? They pulled all those alts, and they're still there. They still have dragon. You know, like, yeah. Oh, right now. Is That's, on. You have to Ow. capitalize on that if you're Temple. Yeah, have to move right now. Temple is a do or die here. May all for the zoning. Can we make it around this curve? Gotta stay hook card because it's about to head into overtime. Looks really like they're getting point one. Well, we'll see. Uh, there is still a possibility that UCI is going to be able to contest. Danishi was taken out early, oh. and so was Ago, and Ago has already switched to Hammond. So all they got to like do is stall Ago is right out there. until the rest of the team get there. Yeah. Oh, they're ready for the drop. Perfect timing Christian doesn't there. find a go, but they're able to take him out. That's uh, the unfortunateness of being ball when there's a May and Sigma on the other team. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, he would have thought. Immediate regret. <laughs> you, you really yes. tried. But you had to, right? That, that's, you know, you live with it. They thought the first part was going to be hard. It's going to be even harder here with the Ash on the high ground. We're gonna really have to disrupt that, not let a UCI set up on top here. Uh, I'm also digging Danishi's positioning. Like, just being a pest from so many different angles that you don't normally see used. Yep. Yeah. 
fades, Bob gets taken out pretty quickly. We see that Gunstrings is put, trying to push forward with that Moira ult. And the old, UCI yeah. is forced to take a less than favorable position right now. And you see both teams have their supports in their clutch carry roles right now. Helga Great Matrix. Used. Excellent Matrix by Helja. Positioning. Everyone has been good. Helja, you are a good support, man. My dude. <laughs> I feel I should point out, Stadium has been a very consistent Orisa here. Gaining ult at a very consistent rate, being able to maintain space and has some very clutch shields when they're needed. Vanishy in a ch the cheeky Hanzo spot, we're gonna get those picks. Temple just trying to push through here, getting shot from all sides. Even behind, there's the bomb from the back line. I know you have to try and do something, or you feel like you have to try and do something if you're up there. But what was what was best case scenario with that dragon? I mean, I guess it's a zoning you know, this, ult, right? that zoning ult. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, Temple took advantage, and they're by the skin of their teeth, just like with the first point. It looks like they're about to take the second, and they're going to be riding a ton of ults going into this last stretch. Uh, they're gonna need it. Uh, I mean, just the DPS on UCI really make use of the environment. So they're gonna be up on all those ledges and they're gonna get these angles and, you know, let's see. <gasps> Whoa! New buy, oh. almost as soon as he pressed Q, gets taken out by Danichi. And he is not playing around. And you got Fade on fire, not missing shots. And if I'm not mistaken, Fade has had some contenders experience. Is that right? So, wow. Yeah, uh, has played in uh, contenders for the Pacific region, uh, has competed. And you know, it sort of goes back to what we were saying in the last match where like experience shows itself, right? Being able to handle these moments and not cave under pressure. That's something it like that. That's, <laughs> like this play look right here, Fade is able to get that high ground. An insane dynamite is able to build ult, drop it down, takes out two, and at this point, UCI has dominant control over the space. Temple's got to just try and regroup and get out of there. They only have 30 seconds to try and put a meaningful push down, and now they've been staggered a little bit. So what are you looking at? Maybe 12 seconds, right? Possibly. They're going to have to ride and coast this out. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the only positive is that point's right there. You can literally drop onto it. Go with the dragon here. Okay. This is a very good dragon placement. Is able to try and split the team up a little bit, but unfortunately, oh uh, no, or fortunately rather, there is a takeout of Stadium, which is huge. Now if they focus on a go, they're going to be able to get some forward momentum. Oof. Fade, just Fade free. on the high ground. Un yep. Untouched, just free. Everyone is free. Here we go. That could have gone so much worse for UCI, but they're able to bounce right back. They were not able to take out a go, even with Stadium missing, right? Hell Judge and Sofrona were able to keep a go completely up, completely alive, and because the focus on a go was so narrow for Temple, Fade was basically able to get free shots nonstop on top again, right? That that was a very hard thing for for Temple to do, uh, to be able to make it through, and, and uh, unfortunately they were not able to <laughs> capitalize. But so, so what do you do now? Uh, you find yourself in Scrooge McDuck's vault, and <laughs> you know you have to prepare for this. How are yeah. you holding UCI down? Ready for battle. <sighs> Ash has got to go, baby. Ash has got to go. Like, you got to count. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's the positioning, right? Not even the damage so much when, yes, Fade is doing crazy amounts of damage. But it was really the positioning that I feel like having a character like Ash provided at UCI with that whole team, especially at the end there. They were just on point. So I, I really don't know. Maybe get it. 
Get, get a little diva in there. I don't know. Just someone to bully this this back line. Yeah. And gave I, I was like going to say that. that question. And both BK and I both sighed at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> We're just like, because ah, it's not going to be easy. I completely it's agree not. with BK that a diva would be. I mean, I know that's my answer for everything. But being well, I was going to say. Yeah, go for it. Uh, that's been the theme of the night, right? Like. D.Va is in such a great place right now that, given the chance to utilize her kit, why wouldn't you? Especially in these situations where it's clear that you need that presence. Even, like we said earlier, even the threat of be being able to get up high and push people off high ground. Yeah, the main thing that I can think of is that, you know, D.Va's a very mobile tank. Supports Reinhardt probably best of all. Oh, and my gosh, just leaving an Orisa or Sigma as the only shield does put a lot of pressure on that shield. But still, when you uh, have somebody like Fade, you gotta force them out of that position. You gotta force them into an uncomfortable place to be able to move things forward. Uh, and I would say it's quite the opposite on this push, where UCI is just giving up space and uh, UCI t Temple giving up space, and UCI is just saying, "Don't mind if I do." and taking they are everything. Rolling. Yep. UCI is just rolling through this first point here with five minutes on the clock. Your temple's got to get their act together, bro. Someone's got to go with it. Where's the pep talk? You know, the locker room talk. All right. You can't keep letting them do this. They've got two long range characters that just sit in the high ground and they've got a Baptiste and a Mercy. Like, we've got to divide and conquer somehow. Can't let them keep getting these free yeah. shots. This is always that interesting conversation, at least for me, where, you know, you have a BAP, and I love BAP, I think he's maybe the strongest healer in the game right now, and then you have your other support on the Mercy, like, because of the way this matchup's looking, you might need Mercy because of those reses, because you need to be able to be 6v6 instead of being down one, which they've commonly been in that situation. Yeah. Or do you I, go with Ana, who offers a little more utility, especially with the Bob that you just have no answer to, right? Well, it's difficult, right? Because if you're, if you're t talking for Temple, having an Ana is going to be difficult against a, 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 a team like UCI who's playing all spread out and, and not grouped together, right? Which normally is a difficult thing to do, but because they're setting up so many different attack vectors, it's really just hard for Temple to... to to stay together, and when they do, Fade's got a dynamite waiting for all of them, or they've got a dragon heading their way from Danachi. So it's it's just hard mode at this point. The protection that Fade is getting is significant. It's such a struggle for Temple to take them out, and they're using Fade as bait for that reason. Here's the bomb. Oh my I goodness. That damage boost Mercy ult at Ooh. the end was enough to seal the deal. Fade is just a monster of tons of damage. Their experience absolutely shows here. That Junkertown point is uh, is a difficult one to defend sometimes, but just take a look at Fade's responsiveness and adaptiveness. Dynamite's coming out right when they need to, building up ult charge. Oh my gosh. Just, just pop off, Fade. Pop off. And and then he bounces right out as if you were never there. And a Bob what do you enters do? in his place. Yeah, what do you do? Uh, UCI I won't. Yeah, question mark. Right? No, you're That's faking. it. <laughs> That's it. Uh, like, seriously, I see the brain. Uh, He's like, really, though? I'm trying to really figure this out. Uh, and I just... <laughs> while, while, while we're trying to process what just happened and, you know... Thank you, thank you. Relay it for you guys. Uh... Let's do a let's do a quick contest uh, for the next minute. You know, whoever gives us sort of the best, uh, like uh, the best Overwatch logo, with like, you know, using your text and chat, make a cool oh, uh, Overwatch tech, you know, tech uh, text image. Spam it. Let's see. We'll give a couple T-shirts out. You know, keep keep everyone in this, but. I, I, I need a second. What do you guys think? I, that match was just... <laughs> it was difficult, yeah. So 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 while you guys are trying to come up with your best text logos in the chat, as which we will judge, um, we I, to break this down, right, the unstoppable forces are clearly fade. 
and Danici, right? The, the, the support that both of them were getting was incredibly good. Safrona being able to damage boost, mobilize, bounce between whoever needs that damage boost at that given time was extremely helpful. Rezzing when necessary, especially like when it's one of those key players was a big deal. It's, it's who do you even focus at that point when you're Temple, right? I mean, they even tried focusing a go when, it's, when it was just him. They were ta- able to take out Stadium. It wasn't enough. It, the support line, everything was so tight for, for UCI. Very difficult job for Temple to, to do here. Oh, man, dude, this was crazy. You, I, Temple standing aside, UCI absolutely dominated. Like, it, it was pretty obvious. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they were popping off the whole time. And seeing teams that are that good, I mean, even the first one we got... Rutgers, you've got, oh my gosh, all that you see, every school, honestly, is so good is because it's, there's a big prize pool on the line. I mean, we've got we've got a 1K prize pool on the line for this tournament, Operating Systems Collegiate Championship. So to see the skill come out for UCI there was was needed because we're, we're not taking no scrubs here. We looking for some quality competition. We want to see the top tier plays from some of the best people around. So I'm really excited to see who's going to take this in the upcoming weeks. I mean, 1K prize pool, like what? It's on the line. You got to play for serious. This is not for play play. I mean, yeah. what, what would you do? Yeah. What would you do with $1,000, right? For playing Overwatch. Oh my gosh. <laughs> a uh, a 1K prize pool? What? <laughs> I'm like, what's what's everyone doing at home? of Overwatch you can buy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, well, what's, what would you guys spend it on? Tell us. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Talk about stimulus. No. Right? Stimulus? Yeah. This, is, this is better than a stimulus check. Yo, I'm just trying to get a new graphics card. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying. <laughs> that was the other potential name for this. The stimulus, the stimulus championship. championship. <laughs> oh, no. In order to compete, you have to provide your 2018 tax returns. Oh, send them on in. No. <laughs> don't. Oh, don't, actually. Man. To make it abundantly clear, do not send us anything. We, we are good. <laughs> Be sure to follow us and catch the amazing content we do all week. But yeah, I mean, let's let's do a quick recap of today. I mean, there was so much quality play. Like, you know, it's yeah. we're, we're one game in for everyone, right? We don't want to say some teams have separated themselves, but there are a couple teams right now that, in my mind, like I can't imagine not being in the top three at the end, right? Mm-hmm. At least, sure at least are. coming out of the regular season. Playoffs are a whole different thing. I think we all know that. So I, I leave this conversation to strictly the regular season standings. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it looks like our next map is a map I have yet to hear someone say they dislike. Yes. Which it's is Universal. King's Row. Yes. Everyone Universal loves King's Row. Map. And King's Row is a particularly good map because a lot of times it lets you play your favorite character, I guess, assuming it's not banned. But it's a very versatile map, right? You want to play long range? Go for it. There's great long range uh, avenues here. You want to play some brawly stuff? Get your Rhines, get your Zarya's out of here, right? But Let May go. Let May go. You're definitely going to see a ton of May here. It is very close quartered, so May's ult is extremely effective on this map. Your safety. So assuming that we're sticking with these uh, compositions in, in terms of defense, right? Danichi is on May, but they don't have a Lucio. They have a Zen. They have Helljudge on Zen. And if their playing is any indicator of how good of a Zen they'll be, I'm so excited to see some volleys come this way. Here we see a rotation go through Hotel. Look how they've taken defensive positioning away from UCI here. Incredibly good play by Temple. That that speed boost by Mamboom was critical in being able to get those early picks, but Fade fires back. Doesn't seem like it's gonna be enough though. This is what I was mentioning before. This is where, where a Lucia would have been critical for UCI. They, did, they were not able to speed away or group together uh, in retaliation to that move through Hotel. Oh, there's that spray. You guys will see There's that. the spray. 
There's the cute spray. That's it. We love it here. I'm very excited to see that maybe Yup will be able to show his stuff a lot more on this map. He's been isolated. Can he make it out? No, he does not. Uh, I'm also glad to see this from Temple. Uh, I've had a couple conversations with uh, Coach Roman, and you know they were a pretty well put group. Like you know they they think about the game. Like it's not just like I'm gonna play and like you know click heads. There is thought put into it, and uh, I'm glad you know they're having a good showing to this point on King's Row anyway. Yeah. Looks like Yup is is indeed trying to be aggressive, which might be needed against a team like UCI. Trying to basically take them off balance or by surprise is going to be critical for them, I feel. But here we see that a go is retaliating with a huge Sigma ult. Doesn't get too much value out of it. And Momboom quickly rising in the ranks as far as uh, impressive Lucio players for me today. These are some very good moves. Speeding the tank line up and speeding Yup when necessary is going to be super important against UCI, especially when they don't have a Lucio to speed backwards. And it should be noted that, you know, Discorded for most of that time, but fearless and just coming in and out, right? Yeah. So here we see that Bacon does have the mail. Helljudge does have Trance, though which could be a good response to it. So unless Yup is able to take somebody out really quick, it, it, the mail could be nullified by Helljudge. Danichi now has his blizzard online. It might be a way, it, perhaps UCI might be trying to bait out the uh, ults from Temple first. And here they come. And yet, as a response, here come UCI's ults, which are extremely effective. Fade is able to take advantage of the Blizzard spacing, takes out two in the form of Gunstring and kill shot. Yup, seems yep, to be makes it out. teleporting out, yep. I'm quietly over here deciding if I like Fade. Onzo more than I like Fate's Ash? I, I can't decide. It's hard to top Dad Ash for me, honestly. That ah. Fate on Ash was so good. Oh man, you might have just won best joke of the night, man. That was uh, it. If I did with that, then this is not a very good tournament <laughs> of jokes. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, here we go. Huge pull. Oh my. But Temple's go right at this party. Oh no! Yup is still able to find two! Or, or it looked like Yup was just completely two. out in left field. It was necessary because Trance was nowhere near them. He had to take advantage. That, and you know, in hindsight, great play, but live, I was just like, oh man, what a wasted ult. And no. Yup, doing doing what they can, man. <laughs> there we go. Jack is rolling out here, trying to give him some space to get in that's, position. Oof. That's ooh. Fade. Fade gets a major pick. Now at this point, Sophrona's probably debating whether or not to put Ant Matrix down to take advantage of this one shield situation. Because right now... Oh, yep, there it is. Out. Fade is killing it. Killing it on this Hanzo. And I was just about to say, you know, they get Fade to bring out the dragon and, you know, no one goes down. But there it went. <laughs> yep. Ooh, an excellent ice wall done by Bacon there to mitigate what could have been a disastrous Tifa bomb. Oh, here we go, Danishi, what's Y'all are that? seeing this, right? Please. You're Bad all seeing purple. this, right? Oh. This monster, May Blizzard, from Danichi was imp is made only better by Helljudge's massive anti-nade. A very decisive ult.
done by Danichi. Excellently done. The flank behind them was unexpected, and it left them wide open for a Hell Judge anti. Beautiful to see. Uh, getting word now, St. John's has beaten Westchester University 3-1. Wow. Well done. Okay, here comes Bacon's Blizzard. Matrix placed in front of it to try and take advantage. A oh! Scoop. New Bike gets credit for it, but it looks like it might have been a Mom Boom Boop. Momentum seems to be on Temple's side here. They, they gotta get the D.Va. Safrona, looking for a good position, is able to take out Mom Boom. Fade takes out Bacon. And what could have been a decisive cap by Temple is mitigated by UCI. A lot of credit to a go on D.Va there. As well as Safrona for keeping that going. <laughs> Wait, to throw the bomb? Oh, wow. She missed? Uh, oh <laughs> no! Chain of events. But she, yes, a go did not stick the landing on the Diva bomb. What a pull! Oh, what a pull! Wow. Huge pull into the Kill dragon. Kill shot! Oh, oh my gosh! The Poor Bacon. Excellent halt. Excellent halt. You have one last push on you. What are you doing? You have Blizzard. Bongos are out. Here oh, comes the Blizzard. Danichi, another one. Danichi pulling the same trick twice. Takes all the space. Gets two kills on Blizzard damage alone. And then finishes it off by taking out Gunstrings. That being said, Temple did a very good job in that push. They had a lot of momentum towards the streets level. But... Ultimately, UCI responded very strongly. Danishi taking them by surprise multiple times with that May. And Fade just needs to just chill out and send arrows on in. Atroc did a lot of work with those halts towards the end. And, God, everybody on, on UCI did extremely well. But not to sleep on Temple. Bacon was doing a lot of good work. Mamboom, I think, did some excellent Lucio movement. And getting some key picks as well. So I'm interested to see what things are going to look like now as we switch between offense and defense. Ready for battle. Got fade on for Temple, we do see that double shield is back. Yup is on Hanzo rather than that Reaper. Attackers incoming in 30 seconds. There we go. Let's take a look. What's going on over here? I always want to know what the pep talk is. Like, do they do they sing a song beforehand? Do they have like a war cry? I'd be down for a team war cry. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like Danishi is going to be sticking with a soldier. Might be a good choice. A go back on the hog. A good halt hook combo could be very solid for starting off this fight. Let's see if they're able to pull it off. It's going to be hard Woo against double shield. Oh, Bacon, Bacon gets a pick on Eldred. But they do finish the halt hook combo. Nubai. Nubai has been consistently good with the Sigma. Has fallen prey to some bad luck one or two times in the form of Fade. But is doing a very good job in terms of supporting kill shot. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like a lot of times the Orisa player of the team is almost like the drummer. It's like the drummer is so important for the band. But everybody's just like, yeah, you're the, you're the Orisa. Some would say Orisa is the Ringo star of many teams. Of the heroes. <laughs> like even when you're doing an excellent amount of stuff, not a lot of people know that you're doing it. It's unfortunate. But I've seen a lot of good work out of both uh, Petrock and Killshot. Oh. 
So here, Nubai has got to do some damage mitigation because he probably knows that Danishi is, is, is lurking in the ranks with some soldier bullets. Look at this aggressive defense by Temple. Killshot doing an excellent job reclaiming some of that space. Bacon takes advantage. Ooh, ooh. Where are we going? Ooh, good old legs. Using legs to get out of there. Gotta go fast. I mean, we committed bail there. Uh, so I I'm not so sure I feel about uh, Temple throwing that out there. It's hard to say, because keep in mind, right? I think Danichi is still way deep, right? Fade is as well. Oh. Are both the DPS? Okay, no, Danichi made it back to the front line. I thought both of the DPS were flanking at this point. Fade takes out the bongo, though. Huge splash done by Hell Judge. Coupled up with the visor, that's going to be huge. A go comes in with his hog ult, hog ult and takes out the Lucio. This could be enough for UCI to get moving. Wow. It's going to be very surprised if Bacon made it out of there alive. It's just slow and steady. That's just what yeah, it is. at this point. At this point, right, if Temple can hold UCI off here, this is a very difficult place for UCI to get back to. It is the longest walk for them, but they cap it. It didn't even look like Temple really tried. Oh, <laughs> Mambu does get a very good poop on a go, though. What? Oh. Fade? actually gets Yup with the three-pointer. It didn't stick to him, but it didn't seem like Yup was able to move because he was in the middle of committing to a Hanzo ult. I do see that a go has switched to D.Va, which is very strong on this first on, on this last point. Being able to contest the high ground is kind of a must, especially if you're going up against anything that can take advantage, like Yup on Hanzo. Bacon trying to nullify Danichi on Doomfist. Pays off. You gotta focus the hard carry. Oof, Fate out. is thirsty to finish off either the Moira or the Hanzo, but it is proving very difficult. Temple able to stall it out right here. So at this point, Fate has consistently nullified kill shots, bongos before they're even able, able to get a chance to be effective. Here comes Patrox ult. Bongo does allow Danichi and Fade and Safrona to be able to get some key picks here. We're going kill for kill. Temple definitely on the back foot. Nice clean up. Here it comes down to the wire. They don't need to complete the third point. They just got to make it past this little marker here. Killshot waiting for the rest of his team, but it's going to be close. Oh, Temple coming with the Coalescence. We got to get on this point here. Gunstring's pushing out with, with Coalescence as well. Yo, we're all up in this fight here. We pushing UCI all the way back. Temple said, not on my block, baby. <laughs> Bacon had an excellent ice wall there, right? So even though Safrona was trying to escort everybody out of what was an uncomfortable position, Bacon kept them stuck, taking all of that damage from Killshot and Yuck. Minute 30 on the clock here. Enough for, would you say two pushes at least, I would say. 
I would say so. Got a few ults but look there. at how many Hang ults are online. Oh! From behind! Oh, oh my from behind! God. A diva bomb from behind completely takes Temple off guard. Oh, it's, that's it. And there it that's is. That's it. A go with the game winning move. UCI comes out the victor. Even though Temple put up an extremely good fight towards the end. And here's Danichi. A terrifying May. Just the one of the many awesome Blizzard records yeah. <laughs> up this yeah. whole match. He pulled Temple that move off not once but twice. That what a what a hard fought defense though by Temple towards the end. It, it Clearly, Danichi and Fade were significant factors in UCI being able to push forward. But Temple did a lot to mitigate against that, right? Bacon's May was very good. Very good ice walls, very good cooldown management, very good isolation of targets. Blizzards were also consistently good for taking back space. But ultimately, UCI had an all-around top-performing team Safrona, I believe, was playing maybe, I think, I believe Mercy on earlier matches switched over to the Batiste, did excellently on the Batiste. Hell Judge was an excellent Ana, switched over to Zen, got some value out of Zen, but everybody was very flexible, able to turn things out on UCI. And unfortunately, although there's, you know, Mom Boom did their best, Noob Bai did their best, Bacon did their best, a lot of people did their best on, on, on Temple's side. They just became overwhelmed, especially with Ago's incredible diva bomb from the back line on that last point. That was that was a surprise oh. for everyone. Cheeky, cheeky. I you know, and I had noticed too, I was like, where's where's the takes? I don't see any take. Is the moment I'm speaking, sure enough. <laughs> This bomb's coming out of left field. That's how it gets you when you're winning that weird sweet spot where you're not actually at the end of the map. You know, you always are so vulnerable to to flanks, I feel. So so they're, I mean, they were pushed up far enough. What a wipe. I, I saw some spicy plays all day today, let alone yeah. that match. Like, people were not holding back. Like, straight savage. Absolutely. So I... I'm excited to see what's got in store for us going forward. I mean, all these teams here really, really showed what they got. Yeah, I mean, we got the highs and lows of a go there, right? You get the amazing bomb, but then you also get the bomb where you miss the landing and you're just off the map. <laughs> you, know, just, you, you can't live that one down. Uh, so I'm hearing that the only match still being played is... One second, let me double check the records. Sure. Uh, we have Harrisburg and UNT playing, uh, with Harrisburg currently leading one nothing. Uh, so let's check out our standings, which are being updated as we speak. Nice. The, what, oh, oh wait, wrong gosh. side. Wrong side. Wrong side. Oh. Sorry about is this that. parchment oh, paper? Good. Gabe, is this yeah. parchment paper? What this is, is the that? operating system collegiate championship standings. We have Rutgers at the top. <laughs> one nothing. They won three maps. UT after that, one nothing, three maps. UCI just finished, one nothing, three maps. Uh, St. John's okay. as well. Uh, NYIT, same. Let's uh, there it is. Hunter, oh one, but they did win two. So you know, give them credit. Uh, let's move this hand. Got Westchester, oh one, but they did win one. Uh, and then we have RIT, Ole Miss, and Temple coming up with the 0 and ones and zero map wins. But it's week one, right? You have yep. six weeks. We'll be here every Monday, 8 p.m. Be sure to follow our channel, follow us on social for any updates. And uh, yeah, I mean, this was a great day, great night of Overwatch. Yeah. What a Absolutely. great start to this, right? I'm so yes. pumped. I'm honestly so excited. I, uh, I'm trying to yeah. think back, right? Like, what was your... What, what, what were your favorite moments from today? Like, if you could pick your own little highlight reel. Oh, man. Oh, man. You're giving me the hard questions? I don't know. I, Ash? Every Ash moment? Am I biased? Yeah. Or it's no, this you, and that. It's perfectly I, I legit. I can't. This and that. <laughs> popping off that match was... So, 
you don't see good ash play enough okay i must be deprived that's why it was such a big thing for me but that between that and um the the winston play uh earlier on I, in our, in our i was about match. to say vanguard yeah like mm, really mm. really enjoyed watching him tanking uh as someone yep. who will never be able to play winston i just watch in awe and i'm like man look at all that space <laughs> i can only dream so so good yeah Ugh. he 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 got in took care of business, made a space, bounced back, then jumped right back in over and over, expertly handled. I loved watching Vanguard. But yeah, to your point, BK2, watching this and that was actually truly a treat. So there was, there's was there been some really good Ash play today. Um, I'm a little, I'm almost a little worried that next week when we have our, uh, you know, basically what this week's ban list is going to be in effect, um, that we might not get to see as much Ash as McCree and Widowmaker are going to come back into the rotation. That being said, you know, I really wish, I really hope that um, that this and that stays with the Ash, that that uh, that Fade flexes it every now and then, um, and I, of course, hope to see a lot more on a play, um, but that might not happen. I'm not sure. I mean, bands. Uh, yeah, yes. I literally like I don't Jinx. know band. Yeah, who who yeah. knows? <laughs> Every uh, time, <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Go ahead, I believe Matt. that uh, Moira is the only support that's banned for this coming week. So if you're going to be tuning in next Monday, which of course you should, um, this week ladder is uh, ladder's ban list is going to be for tank. Arisa is going to be taken out of the rotation, which means that Reinhardt is going to be making his way back in. Let's which go. is going to lead to some exciting plays, especially with those shatters and everything like that. I mean, if a go, you know, decides to, uh, to pick up Reinhardt, I imagine a lot of flank shatters happening. Um, and on the support side, Moira is now going to be taken out of the rotation. So we can expect probably a lot of Ana Lucio and, and so on, Batiste Lucio kind of situations. Uh, and then for DPS... This is interesting. I mean, Echo and Tracer are going to be gone. So Echo, of course, is not going to be showing up. Tracer being taken out is also going to happen. So Fade is not going to have that available to them. Um, but uh, I don't know. Any predictions? Anything that you want to see? I don't know. We only got such a brief <laughs> glimpse of Genji. I would love to see that come in again. A little, more, a little bit more play than just kind of a spawn camping fun i'd like to actually see it <laughs> in action uh, um that dive is honestly so good to watch like everyone's in a good place right now so I i'm hoping to see the return of the dive even though reinhardt is still viable and and back in rotation i think i think we'll still see a little bit of it you know fingers crossed our girl can dream all right all right uh i mean i'm just excited that you know when gathering all the information about all the players involved, so many were described as ag aggressive and a good majority of them described as overly so. So, like, the team acknowledges that, like, we have to reel this person back a little bit. But at the same time, like, I, I want to see this happen, right? Hold me back. Hold me yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I, I want to see it. And with that, like, just the energy that these teams have, like, today chat you guys were just off the wall so good <laughs> oh, and like man. i love the jabbing at each other because that's what this is right you know this is the kind of environment that uh for those of us that watch college basketball like you know uh cameron indoor stadium uh where duke plays like it's just so much fun it's so intense and everyone's so proud uh so i'm really excited to see the season play out for everyone watching because you know you have a vested interest for whatever reason and just keep chat fun, man. This is going to be great, and I cannot wait. Uh, be sure to tune in. We're definitely going to have a bunch of giveaways throughout the season. Uh, and at, at the end of the day, it's just really, really high-class Overwatch that you know we all love to watch, right? Oh yeah, absolutely, game. I mean, before we end, we might as well actually do this giveaway. Can we get a can we get a O S O W spam in chat real quick so we can give away something today? Like can yeah, we hashtag O S O W. Uh, we are yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it up. Dude, chat has been awesome, awesome, awesome. I've been trying to interact so with good. you guys throughout the stream. I love the banter. The Temple Shade. Yo, Temple, y'all better come out and show up next <laughs> week, okay? Yo, UCI is coming for you, bro. I did not I have know. Some faith. 
Uh, oh that's my just, god! You know what it is? Being on the West Coast, they still have energy. It's only eight o'clock, right? Like we're all on the <laughs> downward trajectory of our day. They're, they're they're still bright and early. They're still bright and early. All right, hurry up, real quick! Gonna close the giveaway, quick, quick, quick! Oh, oh we're so wait, we, we have a winner! Oh, there it is! Tell me a game. What is it? Who's the winner? Uh, it's a guy named Unidan X two thousand. Uh. I feel like he should probably update his screen name. It's no longer the year 2000. Good, sir. Uh, but thanks for hanging in. Uh, this has been awesome. Uh, we appreciate you. Message us, and I'll connect you with our amazing, amazing, amazing uh, leader of our teams, or one of our many teams, Daquan. And you two can chat. So totally. Awesome. Great. It's easy like that, bro. We said we've given away tons of stuff from our sponsors throughout yeah. the season. There. We're going off. So, like, y'all have to tune in next time. This was yeah. day one, and I'm already sweating, y'all. So, like, yeah. I have no idea what the next week's going to be coming in store for us. This is this is one hell of a championship. And Operating System is putting on a great show. So, thank you so much, you guys, for coming in and hanging out with us, dude. I'm, I'm ready. Uh, and, obviously, we have to show love to everyone on the team uh as i cannot thank both of you enough for joining this endeavor and really getting the ball rolling uh it has been so much fun and a blast to be with you guys for this time uh equally show as much love to bifu andre who is running our stream and really really got his hands on everything greg uh yeah greg observing top tier truly uh, Sarah, Sura, who is also observing our off, uh, off stream matches, putting in so much work, uh, Stratus, designing all of our graphics, just the entire team here at OS. Uh, we are ecstatic about this whole, whole season. And obviously you guys are too. So keep showing up, keep giving us that energy in chat. Tell people, tell people what it's about. Come on. Yeah. Oh, bless mods. Everyone's giving me some love. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye, bye. Watching. See you next week, Monday. See you next week.